All right, we're good. All right. Um, so last time, y'all finished up the museum heist. You delivered the Merkmeyer stone or the Merkmeyer egg to Dr. Cassie Daniels, and she encased it in amber. Y'all convinced her to leave the city. Galanis helped her leave the city. Um, Inchi, who was captured by Alda Arkin, uh, managed to escape from her and her human-sized doll servant, Marigold. Um, and y'all all met back up at the Yawning Portal. Um, you spent a lot of time talking about the man uh, named Galanis and what had happened so far, and then Galanis came there. Uh, uh, y'all all got paid. Galanis said he didn't think he was going to continue working with all of you in the future, citing that uh, you weren't ready and that it was too dangerous. And then he went up to his room, and a few minutes later you heard a loud noise and a growl from up there. You went up there and found Galanis dead on the floor, strangled to death with the imprint of a chain around his neck. Blinken, with your ranger abilities, you found out that... Uh, Elsewhere in the room, there were claw marks from a fiend. Uh, Inchi grabbed Galanis's ten-gallon hat and his black scarf that has a golden pattern uh, around the edges of golden keys. Um, there were pages strewn all about the room, written in Infernal. Uh, Blinken, you were able to pick those up and read some of those. Of what you've been able to translate so far... It's a bit difficult because Galanis wrote in a code in a kind of way. You have to really spend some time with it. This uh, book here is what you have so far. This diagram um, and his notes on each of these things. You could tell that he was trying to find things about Xanathar the Beholder, a group of bards named the Doom Raiders, and Lord and Lady uh, Castellanter or uh, Victorio and Amala Castellanter. Um, I believe y'all investigated his body. You took his bag of holding off of his neck. You reached in there. You found that blue stone that was preventing you from memorizing things about the Vault of Dragons. Blinken, you were able to communicate something inside the stone that said, Blinken, they stole my eyes. They stole my voice. Uh, get, uh, you learned that it was the soul of Aranax, and you agreed to give it some of your flesh so that it become whole again. When you did that, it burned the flesh off of your hand and turned into a dragon spawn, uh, what you were supposed to get for your character at this level. <clears throat> uh, and then he casts a spell on all of you that lets you remember the things that Galanis told you about the Vault of Dragons. I put that in the chat. Because uh, I know it was a lot, but basically I just wanted to give y'all all the lore up front, tell you what you're doing, tell you what you're going for, and then let y'all approach it however you want. Uh, and we're going to really start seeing how y'all want to approach it this session. Uh, that's kind of what I want to do in these roleplay sessions, figure out what you want so that I can uh, then make the missions tie into what you want and reward y'all for your creativity and what you want to do. Um, I believe y'all stuffed Galanis into the briefcase of holding, breaking his shoulder uh, while doing it, and then you all went to sleep because you were exhausted. You all went to sleep at about 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. Um, I'll say it's now about noon. Uh, does anyone have any questions about what happened last session? Oh, okay. Nope. No questions. All right. Hey, everybody. Roll initiative. Hey. I got a nat 20. Brex got a 19. Cool. Got a 22, I mean, goddamn. Mine's a nat 20. 
culpable more because how, you have the minus one, dude. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Well, Four you extra bonus for both of them, but oh, that's, that's higher. If it's we're getting well, yeah. twenty. Hill's nat twenty is higher, so he goes first. Then we're doing Brax. Then we'll do Blinken. Okay. Huel's in this game. Say Blinken should go first because he's 20. No, I'm, I'm kidding. He got the natural to the 20 success. So. Okay. Hey, uh, did that journal entry upload all right? Can y'all read what's on it? Uh, the Xanathar, the Doom Raiders. That's yeah. all stuff yeah. that he was looking into, right? Yes. These are the notes Perfect. that Blinken has translated. And then there's also a transcript of things he said to you that he, that you forgot because of this in the chat. There's a few hints and stuff in there. I know it's a long monologue, but it's like everything you need, really. Okay. Huel, <clears throat> you are waking up on your third day in Waterdeep, and what a couple of days it has been. Uh, you awaken to the sound of uh, noon on the streets of Waterdeep. Uh, you are in your room at the Yawning Portal. Uh, as you wake up, one of the first things you see are bloodstains on the carpet, reminding you of the grisly scene the night before. What do you do? You wake up, you look at the blood, kind of take a second, he'd light up, a, take his pipe out, light it up. Remember Galanis, and then kind of just start, like, pondering, like, everything he's found in the book so far. Mm-hmm. Like what Galantis was looking into, like, should we look into this if we're getting too close, if he got killed? He was just thinking right now, he's, he's pondering and smoking. Okay. You also remember that uh, you got a bank card from uh, Dr. Dassey, Cassie Daniels' apartment. Uh, you don't know this bank. You just got to the city, but if you found it, you would have the details needed to access that account. Um, you also owe 25 gold pieces a week to the used cart salesman, and Destry's Raven comes over to you when you start smoking, and it pecks you in the arm. It goes, peck, 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 peck. Yo, you owe two gold coins. And a small hand reaches out of the beak of a raven. The, the clawed red hand holds its hands out for two gold. That's what it costs to bring your cart back. He's in there. There's a big puff of cloud on the bird's face, and then. Just kind of, not to like. Just trying to get him away from him, kind of thing, not, you know. I thought I had gold, but I guess it reset somewhere. Uh, you definitely got 50 gold last night from Galanis. The the roll 20, like, sheet changed. I can't see where, like, my... There it is. Aha, I found it. So we got 50. Okay. I had 13 from before, so 13, 50. Mm-hmm. I'll give him the two gold, and I'll deduct it. Okay. I'm, um, I'm like wondering if I, I try to put, like, put it in his little like what do birds have? Like little crow feet? Fingers? Holding, it's Destry's little imp raven. So he's talking to you while opening his beak and after he asks for money he opens his beak and a small red hand with four fingers and claws holds its hand out uh, making this motion asking for the money. Yeah, they're looking for like the where to put it. He'll like recoil a bit when he sees the hands. Like, oh, and then he'll put the two coins in the bird's mouth. Like, yeah, very, like, hand, like very hand grabs the coins and retracts. <laughs> like wipes his hand off. He's like, oh, oh god. It says, uh, <clears throat> "Your twenty-five gold pieces are due to the salesman at the end of the week." Which you know is four days away. Um, off I won't topic, forget. Uh, Vinny will not be making it. Uh, he is dealing with some shit IRL. Ooh, I, just, tough, I, I just heard back from him. 
Top everything's all good. That's, that's tough. That's what you said last time, and he joined 10 minutes later. Sort of his business, you know? Look, man, you sometimes, you can, sometimes you can sort it out. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you can't. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Huel, did you want to do anything, or are you waiting for your companions to wake up? Yeah, I'd just be filling up the whole room with smoke. You see, like the the light beams pouring in, like just all the smoke. And yeah, just waiting for them to get up. Okay, next up is Brax. Uh, Destry, uh, you wake up. Uh, your Raven uh, is walking around on the bed beside you, uh, in, uh, and you know that you have to go see your uncle today. What do you want to do before you leave? Lincoln will also say that you're awake for this, and then your turn will be next. <clears throat> I'm going to hold my hand out to the crow and ask for mm -hmm. that two, doll, uh, two gold fee for following me around consistently. What? I was trying to pull a fast one on you. I'm trying to get a free two gold. Uh, <laughs> nah. No, the, um, the crew only takes gold coins. All right. <clears throat> I guess I'm going to get dressed sluggishly. Anyone else awake right now or just uh, Blinken? Every Blinken and Huel are awake. Huel is uh, sitting on his cot uh, smoking a pipe, watching the smoke fill the room. All right, uh, all right, gents. Well, I have to go uh, deal with some family business. <coughs> I may or may not be back. Do not wait for me. You are free to come along if you wish. Any responses? He blows the smoke at you. What kind of family business are we entailing here? Um, actually, uh, Brax, I'd just like Destry to go so that we can get your new character in here okay. with everybody. Never mind, you're not invited. Good day, everybody. Still goes to get yeah, up. He's getting this stuff on, and he's like, oh, he just gets sits back down and starts smoking. <laughs> like it's Good his family business. Too many questions. Good day. You wish your new friends could come with you, but you know uh, it'd be better if not. Uh, you actually had some treasure from the museum heist. Do you want to leave any of it with your crew? I'm trying to think of what... You stole what some gold called? coins from the tills. I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. Did you mark that down? I did. Alright. So I'm going to give uh, Blinken two of the gold minis. And I'm going to give uh, Kirby the other one. They're worth three gold apiece. You're cut. Well, thank you, friend. He'll toss in his pocket. Maybe we'll see each other again in the future. Who knows? We most definitely might. And with that, I'm going to reach into my coat pocket, pull out what looks like a bead, and cast darkness on the ground. Mm -hmm. And quickly run out the door and slam it. And when the door is closed, I'm going to dispel the darkness. I'm, I'm gonna scream. Why? <laughs> anyway, you're startled awake uh, at that point, uh, or not? You're startled, like you were awake but groggy. But that just yeah, makes you go, Ugh. yeah. Um, Y'all notice as the darkness fades away, the Destry's Raven did not leave with him. Uh, he is going to stay behind and make sure that Huel pays his debt on time. 
uh, Destry, uh, as you're uh, walking through the city, you're going to take the scenic route. And every once in a while tonight, I'm going to come back and explain what Destry is looking at to just explain various parts of the city. Okay? Hopefully, don't be a Marino. All right. Lincoln, mm -hmm. uh, you awoke when you heard Destry uh, getting dressed. He said his goodbyes and then cast his darkness bomb and left. Uh, you're startled awake. Uh, you're in this room with Huel, uh, who is the only other person in your crew awake right now. Uh, you have Galanis's bag of holding. You also have, sleeping right next to you, a uh, gold dragon about the size of your forearm. It has uh, tiny little wings, and it is curled up, and its uh, belly is moving up and down as it breathes in and out. What would you like to do? Um, well, uh, Blake and, you know, again, he's trying to figure out, uh, well, at first he was kind of fascinated by dragons, and then since he has his little dragon now, he's, he knows that he has that library card, so he probably will venture to the library at some point to see if he could, you know, either claim it or, like, um, used to look into like dragon lore and see if he could take care of the dragon a little better than you know what rumors he may have heard type of thing. So he wants like sources of making sure he could take care of it. <clears throat> okay, so um, with your uh, ranger subclass, the dragon warden, you haven't had any previous experience with dragons, yes? Uh, not even like not, not of water, dude. No, not yet. All, all he would experience is, like I said, the the fiend thing, and then that's where he kind of got into um, the fascination of trying to get a dragon and raise the dragon. So he hasn't really had prior experience with like raising a dragon. Okay. Was there a absent when he got that? I must have been, because I don't remember him having that. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. happened last session. Yeah. That's why all of you can remember what Galanis says, uh, said to you now. Uh, the blue stone had the... Uh, the blue so stone was called the Stone of Aranax. Inside the stone is trapped the soul of Aranax the Gold Dragon. Uh, Aranax the Gold Dragon was known as the Protector of Waterdeep. Long ago, he disappeared. Uh, the stone communicated in Draconic to Blinken and said, You can set my soul free by giving me some of your flesh. It burned off the flesh all over uh, Blinken's right hand. Blinken, you remember that? It stings, it burns a bit. Um, and then the dragon cast a spell over all of you, removing the memory curse it had been placed oh, on. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. I, I, it was cut off in both of our recordings, so it wasn't included in the, <clears throat> in the posts that we did. Yeah. That was towards the end, and that's where it all got fucked up somehow. <clears throat> yeah. My audio stopped recording after three hours on the mark, so I think that's built into the program. I gotta take more notes because I do not remember that bit. I do remember you like burning your hand and stuff. Yeah, it was. Uh, there was like a whole scene of me talking to this uh, gold dragon soul, and I accepted his, yeah. you know, request, and that's where that um, baby dragon manifested with no eyes and mouth. Mm -hmm. So, Blinken, you just kind of wake up. What uh, you're thinking about? What you're gonna do with your day? Your dragon, sensing that you're awake, uh, uh, kind of stretches and unfurls. Its tiny wings stretch out. You're not even sure if it could fly right now uh, without the aid of magic. Uh, and then it turns around and it looks at you. And again, it's kind of uh, disturbing. It has no eyes. It just has little flesh holes where its eyes should be. And the parts of its face that should be uh, a mouth are 
sealed shut by flesh that's overgrown it. And you remember Aranax saying to you, they stole my eyes, they stole my voice, then they stole my soul. Ever since it transformed into this dragon spot in front of you, it has not been able to talk to you. But it wakes up and it makes a noise. It goes, it's very cute and adorable. Um, I want to go talk to it in Draconic. And say, if you could hear me and understand me, just nod yes. It uh, look, cocks its head to the side, and it uh, responds to, like, you're growling. You see its ears mm-hmm. twitch up and down, and then it goes, mm-hmm. and it comes up to you, and it starts, like, trying to dig its hand, its head under your hand, very similar to a cat. You get the feeling that whatever this is, it's a very young dragon. Perhaps it hasn't developed its intelligence yet. Right, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, it is the same thing it should be for your character. Yeah. uh, For your class. And if I'm wrong about that, like if it says it can talk and communicate to you, I will fix that. Okay? Yeah, I'll double check. I'm pretty sure it's just like a... It says it's like a young Drake or whatever, so um, I'm assuming that's what... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. The, The things it said to you, they stole my eyes. They stole my voice. It makes you wonder, with that phrasing, where are his eyes? Where is his voice? Yeah, who are they? Okay, um, I didn't mean to post that, but let's go ahead and do it. Uh, these are the items that were in Galanis's bag of holding. Okay. There's two more. Okay, two potions of invisibility, the boots of elven kind, which I believe are the ones that make your steps silent, with removable spurs. So you can put these spurs on it, and it will make noise when you walk, and then you can take them off very quickly and be silent. Uh, The gloves that he had were the gloves of bugbear strength. They set your strength score to 17. Uh, Blinken, as you look at these things... You notice that the runes on them are infernal, and these things have a very distinct smell. It smells like eggs that have sat out for too long. You know it to be sulfur. You've smelled it once in your life before. There is also an immovable rod. There are two greater healings and three disguise kits. There is also an all-black uniform. You know this is a city blackguard uniform. These people are can basically be judge, jury, and executioner. They're basically captains of city watch, um, <clears throat> of city watch uh, groups. Uh, they can arrest you on the street and try you right then and there. For example, if you stole from someone and you got caught, they could try you on the street, say that you owe this to the city, you owe this to this person, and we're going to take you to jail right now. If you killed someone and you get caught, they could have you executed right then and there. And then there's also his infernal notes. Destry, uh, you also left behind your history of Waterdeep. Uh, That was one of the things uh, that you got from Dr. Daniels' apartments, and also a blueprint of Waterdeep that happens to have a map of the city sewers. I knew I forgot something. Okay. Uh, Next, uh, since Destry left with his old character, let's meet his new character. Destry, your character is new to Waterdeep, correct? Destry's not new, no. My my I'm new sorry, character Brax, is though. Your new character. Tell us his name. Give him a give us a description. Okay, so can I just share my art? 
Uh, one second. I, I know I can do this. Uh, did that work? How about that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Coolio. I'm not seeing nothing. Uh, so my character is a dwarf. If you open up the Discord, you will see a picture of him. There we go. So his name is Thorgrim. Uh, from what he will tell people is that he came from Phandalin and that he uh, decided to try to improve his life from where it was prior. And he doesn't really go into too much detail about why he left. <clears throat> uh, but he is uh, four foot nothing, exact. He's very muscular, bald head, and red beard. He looks pretty much how he does in the picture. Um, or anything else you want me to share about him? Uh, when he, you get to Waterdeep, one of the things you know about it is that people will make a note of your name. Uh, and you'll be expected to present ID if you're ever stopped by the city watch. Knowing that, would you just walk through the gates, or would you try to sneak your way in? I mean, he has not been convicted of any crimes in the area. So, you know, he would probably just walk in. He probably doesn't have ID on him. Okay. Um, you know they would provide that to you at the city gates. Okay. Uh, when you're about a mile away from Waterdeep, you get approached uh, near this uh, the edge of this forest. Two people step out. They are wearing red bandanas with some kind of darker red stitching sewn into it. Their clothes are ready, ratty, and they hold rusted daggers in their hands. And they say, Oh, Chabla, we needs to see what you have on you. Might be more useful if we have it than you have it. Uh, one of these creatures is a human, and the other one is a tabaxi, a cat person. I'm going to look at my backpack that's holding two hand axes, and I'm going to look at my giant maul that I'm holding in my hand that's slung over my shoulder. And I'm going to look at them and look at the maul and be like, I've got me walking stick. That's what, that's, a, is that what you want? Uh, they look back and forth to each other. Uh, the tabaxi takes a step back, but the human grabs him by the elbow and says, Remember what he said? We well, have to practice. Get ready for what's to come. And he shoves the tabaxi forward and he starts walking. We're not going to do a whole round of combat here. Mm -hmm. Um, we are just going to roll for it. You are a higher level than them, so you are going to roll uh, your attack with advantage. They are going to roll theirs normally. So, since you're a higher level, you'll also go first. They quickly right. get within range of you. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to give them one last chance to fuck right off before I just crush them with the hammer. And they look if... completely determined. You know, I'm feeling spicy. I'm going to just kneecap the tabaxi. Okay. Go ahead and roll for that with advantage. With advantage. Uh, okay. 21s across the board. Damn. You got the same thing both times? That's a 1 in 400 chance. Okay. So yeah. you, success you successfully kneecap the tabaxi. You just hit it and you hear the bone break. The tabaxi goes down and begins clutching it. Uh, at this display of violence, the human uh, loses his spine. You get the sense that these people want to do violence, but that they've never really done it before. Quite unlike you. The human is frozen in fear. What do you do? Look, your stance is all wrong, right? 
put, put, put that, put that butter knife down. Come here, come here. And I'm gonna, and uh, I'm gonna like give him like a. I'm, I'm gonna like pr adjust his stance, show him how to hold the knife properly. Now that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. No, that he's not, you do? He's not gonna stab me, right? No, no, no. He's, he's terrified with fear. Yeah. Uh, as you move him around, he's like shaking. Right. Now, what you gotta do? When you go in, you gotta commit. Right, just, just get right in there. But, always make sure that you're not stabbing into a faint. And I'm just gonna keep rambling on about it. And either he runs off, or I'm just gonna keep talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach him how to be a good bandit. Okay. Um, he sits frozen in fear for a while. <clears throat> uh, he's too scared to interrupt you. Uh, how do you finish your long rap? Right, now I want you to stab me. What? What's that? Go and stab at me! He uh, picks up his rusty dagger. Uh, again, you notice, like, they have these daggers, but they're really bad. Um, and he says, I don't, I don't want to hurt you. I'm going to take... We, we could use someone like you. Who? Ruby rabbits, people. Rabbits. Rise, the rising up rabbits. the nobles. Yes. It's us, 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 us. He stammers and he stutters. Uh, he says, oh, us oh, the common oh, oh, people. Oh, 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 oh. What, what you getting at, boy? We're merely rabbits, and there are people, cruel people who are wolves, and we are going to rise up against them. And he tries to stab at you. He got an 11. Does that, uh, that hit misses. your AP? That misses. He stabs over your shoulder. He kind of overcorrected for what he was doing. What do you do? I'm going to walk away, just sighing. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, these he... days. Can't even teach him how to rob people. <laughs> Useless. All right. So I was going to have them take away some of your starting gold, but to keep you in line with everybody else, I'm going to say you have your starting gold plus whatever ill-gotten gains you got from where you came from. You have 40 gold coins plus your starting gold. You successfully make it through the city gates. They give you an ID card. Actually, can I retcon something? Uh-huh. I'm feeling bad for the guy who tried to mug me because I just shattered his buddy's knees. I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to give them the forty gold and okay. tell them to get into a new line of work. He clearly is not working out. Um, the the human uh, he picks up uh, his friend and he says, "That's the thing, mate. We got no choice but to fight." And he takes off that red bandana and he hands it to you. Uh, and he walks away uh, with his buddy and he says, "Thank you for the gold. The people need it." You're gonna need it for a healer at this rate. <laughs> as I'm walking away. Okay, as you walk away, you uh, look at that red bandana. You try to see what that darker red design on it, it, on it is. You unfurl it, it's a square, and hand-stitched into this square is the image of a rabbit in a, laying on a bed of grass. You successfully make it through the city gates. They hand you an ID card after they write down a brief description of you and your name. And you know that anybody that wants to be anyone, when they get to Waterdeep, the first thing they do is go to the Yawning Portal. I guess I go there. All right. Um, I'm just going to kind of force y'all together real quick, if that's okay. But I don't know these buffoons. You're about to. Oh, no. My only weakness. I... GM Railroad. <laughs> I'm just gonna have Destry's uh, yeah, token yeah. here uh, for now. Let me get rid of that journal. Oh, God. Alright, the journal's in chat. Taking it off the map. So uh, it's about 30 minutes later. Blinken and Huel, y'all are downstairs at the bar. 
you learn that Galanis's room is paid up for the rest of the week, but his uh, ability to order food, uh, Dernan's not going to allow that unless he's there to do it personally. Uh, every other time he's told the bartender, Bonnie, hey, these guys are good. He's not there to say that right now because he's in your briefcase of holding. Um, Blinken and Huel, y'all are at the bar looking at the prices for what's about for what you want to order, and this dwarf kind of shoves his way between you, and he goes to order something at the bar. Uh, Drax, what does your character order? Right, love. Take a take a leg of mutton, <clears throat> and I'll uh, take a maid. Uh, there's this uh, younger, uh, red-haired woman at the bar, uh, along with an older male uh, with a big mustache. You know that as the legend legendary owner of the young portal, Dernan. The woman says, Oi, mate, we don't do that here. There are plenty of other places in this city for it, though. Do what? Uh, but she, she gives you uh, the, the alcohol that you asked for. Blinken and Huel. Uh, Rax's new character is right beside you. And I know it might be kind of awkward to integrate them into the story, but let's just kind of do it, and it'll it'll work as long as we don't ask questions about it, you know? Listen, you're bumping into my... <clears throat> you're bumping into me. You're bumping into my buddy Blinken here. <laughs> no, I'm just... Oh, my bad. I... I, I didn't realize you guys were talking. I just saw a seat, so I took it. Right. Your name's Fuel. I'll shake his hand. Fuel. Nice to meet you, Fuel. Fuel. Yeah, that's what I said. Fuel. Yeah, there's, there's Blinken. Blinken. Nice to meet you, Lincoln. And, uh... Right. I'll ask the barkeep if they have any Regal Eagle. Regal Eagle, what is that? A mead of uh, some kind? It's expensive ale. It's, a, it's like, if, if we're talking real life world equivalency, it's like Grey Goose. Mm. It's the Hennessy. It's the expensive stuff. Oh, I thought it would be like the Merlot. Stuff. Yeah, Merlot. The actual, <laughs> the Merlot. The actual description is variety of enchanted and expensive ale. Often found in does it say how much it is? No. Or order fire. Either one will be fine. Uh, you can order it. I'm gonna say it's one gold coin since it's expensive. Is that okay with you? Oh yeah, cool. One gold each. I'm gonna buy three of them. Uh, yep. So three gold. Yeah, he'll he'll pay it. Okay. Uh, Lincoln, would you have your dragon creature down here with you? No, I don't think so. I would probably keep that <laughs> creature upstairs until I figure out how, because I don't know how people would react to a... I was going to say, I was going to ask before we left, isn't, aren't those illegal? And, well, and it's... One, one thing you know about the yawning portal is no one would ask questions. No, like the crazy stuff goes down in here all the time. You also know that uh, dragonborns are allowed in the city because they're technically a humanoid, not a dragon type, you know? Um, so, you know, you can maybe pass it off as like a salamander or like a magic creature that you've passed an illusion on. You know, you're thinking about that as you sit there at the bar. Um, it would be a risk, though. It is up to you. Oh, I was I was up in the woods one time. They called them commando dragons, or komodo dragons. You could just say it's one of those, Blinken. Hmm. Maybe I don't know, cause it, especially when it has no eyes or a mouth. So that's weird. Say so he's a komodo dragon from um. Uh, the purple rocks across the sea. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, the majestic purple rocks. Got it. Yeah. You've never been there before? I mean... 
Yeah, I guess. Um, the disguise kits that you found in Galanus's bag. It wouldn't work for your dragon, but you think, you know, maybe you could do something to disguise it. It's a real, physical, tangible creature. So, spells on it uh, would work as spells against any, as normally as against any other creature, you know? Hmm. Okay. So, so you guys know that you just lost a crewmate, and here's this very strong-looking dwarf, uh, Throgan, or Thorgrun, um, who looks like he knows how to throw a few hand axes around. Would y'all like to recruit him to your crew? And tell him everything that's going on. I'll bump into Blake and Blake. How about him? He's a. Uh, he seems like he could be some help. I mean, I I don't know, man. Like, but we got a lot of stuff going on, and he, he is. And I, I look over to him. He, he looks formidable, maybe. I'm going to lean over, uh, to Kirby's character and. So, I'm on my way to, to Waterdeep. These two soft belly bandits try to try, try to rob me. They oh, pull out these up here. Rust, like the rustiest daggers. And they're they're spewing some shite about wooby wabbits. The and they're like, give us your rusty. gold. Sorry? The daggers are always rusty too. I know. Like, they don't even know how to care for the weapons. Did you give them your gold? Let's say sipping on the Regal Eagle. Yes and no. At first I didn't. Try to teach the poor... The, well, the one I shot at his knee. He he went down. Some like a ro- cat man. The second one is human. He, he's, he, he damn near soiled himself. So, you know, I, I'd give him some tips to stay alive a little longer. You know, widen your stance. Ar- arms wide, you know, you don't want to be pushed over in a fight. You know, how, how to hold a dagger. I'm like, okay, after 20 minutes, stab me. Couldn't even do that right. So, I said, bollocks all of it, and gave him the 40 gold to go get his buddy a heel and to go become farmers. They sure as hell won't survive on the road. Right, gentlemen, but they're lucky too. You know, I've seen a bugbear pop this guy's head like a grape because he sneezed too loud. I saw... No, no, nowadays. I saw two two, uh, two halflings try to fight an orc. One got his arm ripped off and the other one got beaten to death with it. (laughs) Hey, you never know nowadays. Okay, guys. Let me kind of introduce the thing that's going to allow you to do faction missions here. Inside uh, the Yawning Portal, there is a representative of every faction. I don't quite have their tokens made, but I have pictures of all of them that I'll put in chat um, real quick. In the Yawning Portal, all day, there are going to be representatives of each of the six factions. Um, Oops, I need to make one more circle. Inside the Yawning Portal are representatives and recruiters of each member uh, or each faction that is going to be in this campaign. Sitting here at this table in the Yawning Portal is a member of the Thieves Guild. You know this because he has the tattoo uh, of Xanathar's many eyes uh, tattooed on his bald head. Uh, In this room, there is a sign that says Castle Anters, Private Security Recruitment. Come in for interviews. This pink circle right here, do you see a couple of clowns? They are, they say, help wanted. Uh, Says, uh, 
private logistics, and you know that that's code for steal some stuff for us. Thoreau, what's your character's name? Thorogun, you see over here, this red circle, <clears throat> someone wearing that same red bandana of the people that uh, tried to rob from you earlier. And over here at this blue table, there is an investigator that says, uh, and that keeps asking, does anyone have any information about the break-in at the museum the other night? And then over here, these two black circles, there are these two people that have dyed black hair, and they have dark black makeup around their eyes. They're sitting at the table talking to each other. You know one of these people is Istrid Horn, uh, the woman that Destry was in a lot of gambling debt to. You also know uh, from Galantis' notes that Istrid Horn is a member of the Doom Raiders, one of those three factions that Galanis was looking into. If y'all would like to pursue relationships with these factions, you can simply just walk up to them and start talking, and I'll introduce a character from that faction, and there will be a little mission that we can do in this roleplay session that could get you renowned with that faction. That won't take the whole session. I'll make it quick, just like we did Brax's fight a minute ago, so that y'all have time to go out through the city and do whatever you want to do. Who would like to do something first? Um, well, you know, those blokes over there with the red band, that, those are the fuckers who tried to rob me earlier. Oh, the, 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 the rabbits, right? Yeah, the, the wooby wallets. Oh, what do you want to, and I'm looking at both of them now, so it's, uh. Talking about it, so what do you what, what do you want to do? Do you want to talk to them or? Oh, I was just pointing it out in case uh, you decided you wanted to go over there. They don't seem like well, the brightest fellas. Do a pull like a notebook and then kind of like have the scribbles from the book and say we have multiple leads to go on. What leads? And I'm gonna like try to like nose my way to look over his book at his book. Huel, what are you writing down in that book? He just has the scribbles from, like, the book earlier that, um... Oh, the... Atlantis the had. Lincoln made? Okay. Like, about the so Xanathar, the... Doom Raiders, mm -hmm. and the Lord Victoria. So the node, or the notes from... The notes from Galanis were written in Infernal. Lincoln has a translated journal of it. Thor Grun... As you lean over and try to poke your nose and look at this journal, you can read individual words. You see something like beholder. You see some, some word that says gold. But when you try to piece these words together, you find you can't do it. You can't remember anything you just read. It's an odd book you got there. What's your item? <clears throat> Uh, Sorry? Yeah, what are we... Oh, what are we writing? Yeah, yeah I say what, what you're writing. Just a few leads, you know? Stuff that goes here and there. Alright, Brax, what did you want to do? Or, I'm sorry, I meant Blinken. Blinken, what did you want to do? Um, I think Blinken right now doesn't give a shit about doing any of these right now. He probably wants to... I don't know if I had time to study the Infernal, Infernal Notes thoroughly. No, that would take some time. Because I think that's one of his priorities rather than talking to these guild members right now. So, like, he wants to, like, if we're going to do something about it, he wants to see if there's anything else in these notes that might lead into a better picture of what, you know, 
what's going on rather than what we have right now. Okay. Um, looking through the notes, you know that, like, you could find, like, what the notes are about pretty easily. Like, the notes about Xanathar are clearly, like, they have a label. You recognize the code word as Xanathar. Uh, the ones for Doom Raiders is like that. Uh, same for the Castle Enters. Which group of notes would you like to study today? And you said you wanted to go to the library to do it, right? Uh, yeah, might as well go there to check out uh, if, you know, more information about, like, maybe you yeah, have anything about the dragon or gold dragons or something. Um, okay. So, let me see here. Probably want to look at the Castle Lanterns. Okay. Um, first and as, see what you, you can get. As you step out of the yawning portal to try to go to the El Torture Library and do this studying, you hear this tapping sound on the window from the second floor. You turn up and look, and you can see that little dragon. Um, what were we calling it? The dragon wormling? Uh, scratching at the door. It clearly misses you and wants to be with you. What do you do? Um, I'm gonna. What I'll do is I'll, I'll I guess before I I leave I'll go back up and then um, I'll probably um, uh, I'll, I'll 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 rip off some of my like clothing a little bit like a little thing and then like try to make it like a little ball or play thing so he can mess around and have my scent while I'm out and I'm like trying to you know tell him in draconic it says stay I'll be back and then like you know uh, give you him some rations the uh, the Destry's raven is still in the room uh and it's eyeing your little dragon creature do you say anything to it yeah I say fuck off I know you're here get out of here <laughs> and it flies out of the window. Fucking little okay. thing. <laughs> you make your way to the El Torchal Library. When you get there, uh, there is a young person there, a young human, at the counter. This says, present your card, staff ID, or student ID, please. And you hold up that little tablet that says El Torchal Library. Uh, and he sees it. And he just looks at it, and there's no magic spell or anything on it. He says, come on in, mate. Enjoy your day. And you have access to the El Torchal Library. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So what's your first step in figuring out something about the Castle Lanterns? Um, probably what I'll do then is, um, for the Castle Lanterns part, is try to gather up some... Hopefully some, like, public records, if they have any, about, like, the general specifics of what they're about and why they're so damn special around here in this city. Like, obviously I've known the name, it's just I don't know the specifics, because, you know, I was I was just working at a guild, um, and then, you know, people talk about the Castle Landers, but I don't know what the significance are to, from, you know, that point of view, and uh, mm -hmm. see if there's any type of um affiliations with other uh you know royalties or gang uh, affiliations with the castle landers if they're special blah 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 okay so i'm gonna change something uh there you have heard the castle lantern name a lot not only are they're not just some pair of nobles they're basically the nobles you know, they're not the founding noble families of Waterdeep. They're not that old, but they are big. They are powerful. They do own a lot of the land outside of the city. And they've also started recently competing with the guilds by building workhouses, places where they send peasants or people that are found begging in Waterdeep to do uh, monotonous work in workhouses that are open 24 hours a day. They are kind of out competing your guilds by making cheaper materials. And also being able to work people as lo that long. Guild members, you know, they have rights and things like that. It's one of the good things about being in a guild. They can't overwork you. They have to pay you for what you make. And they enforce a level of quality. So you're never making garbage that you ship out the door. But these workhouses are. Your bosses hate 
the castle enters, but you also know that the castle enters are involved in the guild trading system, where nobles can buy a percentage of the guilds of individual guilds' yearly profits. The guilds accept this because it helps them uh, get funding even when times are tough or when sales for certain things aren't that good or when things like crop yields aren't so good. This noble money helps keep everything afloat. So you do know that much about the castle enters. Did that make sense? Yeah, pretty much they're, you know, high-valued uh, people that um, are kind of important financially to guilds, even though the guilds hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much the gist that I understand there. Okay. Uh, though, digging into the books to find out more things, um, their family crest is a uh, a white bird with a long neck. What's that called? A goose. Uh, bending its head forward with a green cross in front of it. Their family has a villa in the Sea Ward on the corner of Delzorian Street and Diamond Street. They have an ancient burial crypt somewhere in the Undermountain. They were House Castle Enter was ennobled in the year of the Cockatrice, uh, 1248 DR, uh, when the Lords of Waterdeep recognized several merchant houses and granted them noble titles and seals. Let's see. Their original trade was textiles, uh, being able to get many different types of fabrics with many different types of patterns. Uh, from all over Toril, uh, their family has a lot of connections with tradespeople all over the world. Uh, last century, one of them named Caladorn Castellanter uh, became a very famous adventurer and eventually became a masked lord of Waterdeep. Um, as far as recent history, just a second. Okay, so the current head of the family is Victoro Castellanter. He is a Castellanter by blood. He is the firstborn. Uh, Destry's father was actually his brother. Destry was a third-born son of a third-born son, so that's Victoro Castellanter. He is the only living heir of Caladorn, that famous adventurer from last century. Uh, his wife, who married into the family, is Amala Castellanter, and they have three children, uh, for they have two children that are alive. One of their children died within the last ten years. It was big news. There was a public funeral for him. Uh, their surviving children are twins. Okay. Children died past 10 years in all the castle in America.
Um, they currently make their money in banking, money lending, and reports of rumor mongering where they try to influence uh, trade by spreading rumors in uh, papers and gossip amongst the nobles. Okay, we will leave you in the library for a bit. Huel, what did you want to do today? You said there was people in the bar, like members of yes. the yeah. yeah. porn in the mode as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to repeat what they are? I think you said there was three of them, right? There's six of them. Oh, they're all over here at the this part. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a video game. You finish the tutorial mission. Now the open world is there, and all, the, all your quest givers are here. You don't have to interact with all of them. You can uh, build the story you want with these six factions. Do you want me to describe them to you again? No, I, I kind of got a, the idea. Okay. He would. He's gonna quickly glance over the Xanathar stuff. Like, if um, mm -hmm. Thorgrim was looking, he'd he feels like kind of like not scared, but like kind of brushed over it quick. Like I got startled a little bit. I'm looking at like the the Doom Raider part. Just a second, let me write out in chat what they all are real quick. Oh, yeah. So, wait, you're, you're scared of the Doom Raiders? No. The, the Xanathar, like the Beholder thing. Oh, you're the scared of the, the tattoos. Okay. Wooby Wabbits? Wooby Wabbits. Okay. All right. So, yeah, the guy with all the eyes, uh, it kind of freaks you out but because he's not even looking at you. But it looks like he's looking at you. And then you also have this creepy uh, new dwarf friend hanging around. And then you said you look at the, the Doom Raiders? And the Castle Hunters, the Lord Victorio. Okay, so what's in the bar right now is not the Castle Hunters themselves. It is someone that works for the Castle Hunters doing interviews for becoming a private security guard for the Castle Hunter family. You can't see this person. You can just see a sign pointing you to a room in the back of the yawning portal. That was Destry's character's last name, right? Yep. Destry was a member of this Castle Hunter family. I can put him down as a reference. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go apply for that. I'm going to chug the last bit of the, the Regal Eagle. Tell Thorgan I'll be seeing him around. Nice meeting him. I'll, I'll take off to the, the interviews. Okay. Uh, Thorbrun, as uh, your friend, uh, friend Swalhawk, you remember having the distinct feeling that they're up to something. They're up to something big. All right. Hugh, you walk off to this area back here. And who is in here is two security guards. They are not members of the City Watch. They're not wearing plate mail. They have on nice leather armor, and they have nice uh, long swords at their uh, side. They are standing very crisply and professionally um, against the wall back here. And then sitting at this table is an older man with silver hair uh, who looks very prim and proper, uh, but he also looks like he would have a lot of great stories to tell you. Uh, this is Milton. 
He is the Castle Lantern's personal butler. And he says, Ah, yes. Do please come in. Sit down at the table, my boy. Would you like some tea? Of course, I would love some. Thank you. Let me put his card up in the chat. <clears throat> um, I was going to say, I was probably going to grab a second cup. That way I'm double fisting. And after Fantastic. I see him walk in there, I was going to walk in behind him and be like, Hey, forgot your beer. Oh, okay. Fantastic. So uh, Thorbrun walks in here and he says, Oh, delightful. Let me get another cup for you. A dwarf and a... Uh, your character's a halfling, right? Yeah. He's a halfling. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to start drinking the... Nice. I'm going to start drinking the beer you. and the... Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. No, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, I take the, the ale from Thorgan and then I'll start drinking the, the coffee and the beer at the same time. You... Oh. Oh. <laughs> you... No. Okay. No, no, no. You... No, you don't mix beer with leaf juice. That's for elves. You don't drink it. I'm going to hand him says, my beer. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, not at the table. Not while we're trying to be professionals here, correct? Absolutely. Who the hell's this guy? He says, I work for a very powerful noble family in this city, very prestigious, involved in everything from trade to agriculture, land ownership itself, but most importantly, culture. See, we've recently had a few problems. Castellanta Manor has been broken into multiple times by the most devious of creatures in these past few months. And now, El Torcho Villa Museum has been the victim of some kind of horrid attack with arson and a dead security guard. The Castellanters are stepping up. We would like to create our own private security force to step up where the city watch has failed us and to protect the Castellanters, the family, and their investments. I have been interviewing no one but the most brawniest and, might I say, quite dumbest people uh, today. If you guys could impress me here, I have a job that we could use uh, someone uh, for today. There you say. Dumb? I'll kick him under the table as he says that. No, 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 no. I mean, you come to a bar and you are upset that you're interviewing dumb people. Mm. I have come to the Yawning Portal. The best travelers from all over Faerun, the most experienced adventurers on the Sword Coast, make this their stop at least every week that they are here. It is the perfect recruiting grounds for what we are trying to do here. Yeah, I suppose. I'm going to stroke my beard. I suppose you're not wrong. The Castle enters as with all things. We do not want what is merely available. We want the best of the best. Tell me, do you believe that you are the best of the best? Maybe not all the time, but most of the time we... I can't speak for my new friend here, but... I'm gonna kick you in the shin this time, my turn. Yeah, we're, we're the best. We, uh, done a lot of jobs. Very good at it. No, no loose ends. On the one hand, you bring me braggadocio. On the other hand, humility. I cannot think of a better combination. I will tell you what. I have a low-stakes thing today. Just some extra eyes at the museum to make sure that there's no further interruptions as the cleaning crews and the mourners gather. We are, of course, missing one of our noble guardsmen. We are terribly sad to see him go. Would you please dress in all black and go to the museum and simply make sure that nothing happens there for the rest of the day. Someone will be there to relieve you when the sun goes down. Upon completion, for your time, I will grant you three gold coins each. 
and you are suddenly reminded of how much many coins 40 gold coins was, and you are reminded of how well Galanis' job paid with 50 gold coins. Throw in a free night in the tavern tonight after work, and we got a deal. Sounds like a deal. He says, he says I will do that if you complete uh, this task with the utmost profession and discretion. I'm so discreet, I don't know what that word means. It mostly means, go where I ask you to, and don't say anything. No, oh, I'll say it, I'm so discreet, I... Oh, yeah, <sighs> yeah, we're good. Fantastic. So, that is your meeting with Milton, the butler for the Castle Lanterns. He is the Castle Lanterns sergeant. Every group has a sergeant. You're not going to just be able to go up and walk up to Victoro and Amala Castle Lantern. You're going to have to work your way up the ranks, you know? So, as y'all go back out into the Yawning Portal, uh, would you like to talk to other factions? I'm not going to say anything like, uh, Milton will come out and see you talking to other factions and get mad about it. That's not going to happen. Not, not yet, at least. As the story goes on and tensions rise, uh, it would probably be more, but it's just a casual business relationship right now. I'm going to look, uh, Kirby, what's your character's name again? Huel. Huel? Yeah. Okay. So, Huel. That was a good job getting us a job there. Appreciate it. Yeah, see, we're making a good team. I'll cheers with the coffee and beer I have. No, you <laughs> don't drink it with the leaf <laughs> juice! He like squints and his whole face crunches up. He's like, oh. Okay. Uh, did y'all want to do anything else in the yawning portal or did you want to get to your assignment? Uh, yes. I'm going to pull the ruby rabbit bandana out of my boot because I stuffed it under there because, you know, it's a gang item and I don't want people yep. assuming I'm with them. Yep. So I'm going to pull it out of my boot and then I'm going to look at uh, Huel. And I'll, I'll be like, I, I'm going to go see what those uh, ruby rabbits are all about. Um, Perfect. You'd, you'd be interested in coming along. You know, I kind of crashed your last interview. It's only fair if you do it to me. He chugs the rest of, like, the the coffee beer. <laughs> Squints again, and yeah, you can see him come along. Like, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm coming. But... You want to come along, too? What? Uh, Hugh, what's his name? Oh, not there. Blinken is, is not Blinken. there. Blinken went to the library. Oh, Blinken went to the library. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to give you all something good uh, for spending so much time at the library. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thorgrun and Hugh, y'all walk over to this table uh, where the people, or where there's a man with that red bandana, and that person wearing the red bandana is a wrong, a frog person. This frog person, uh, Thorgrun, you notice, has a hand axe in his backpack. He also has a quiver and a bow and arrow uh, laying down beside him. And you see him saying, And that's the thing. Whether it's the workhouses or whether it's the guild houses, we're working our butts off and they take it all. How much could we all have if we got the full value of the things that we made? These are the things that they don't want you thinking about. That's why they're going to work you hard either way, to keep you too tired to do anything about it. You people got to think. You got to rise up. And you recognize him saying, rise up, as something that those thieves said earlier today. And he says, ah, hello, new friends. My name is... Whoops. Sinesh, it is nice to meet you. How can I help you? Good <laughs> up. Place the bandana on the table. I'm gonna look at him. Couple of your boys tried to rob me earlier. Oh, did they now? 
I'll let them off easy. Well, let one of two off easy. The other one's got a broken leg. Could have been worse. Paid for the healing at least. He says, well, if they didn't have what it takes, they didn't have what it takes. We can't have an army that wants to change all these things and an army full of weakness. It's a contradictor it's a contradiction. So thank you for removing those two from our ranks. So what uh, your entire little operation's about uh well over overthrowing the nobles. Nobles, the guild masters, anything that stands above the people has no right to stand above the people. That's what we believe in at the Ruby Rabbits. He says, uh, I'm sorry about what happened to you earlier. Some of our boys have been known to practice with the travelers on the road, you know. And it's a hard life out there on the outside of the city. Not a lot of consistent food to get. All the food that's picked from the fields travels into the city, surrounded by gods. Nothing left for the people that actually grow it. Have you seen what happened to Snow Beetle Orchard? Completely poisoned. Half the city's fruit uh, inputs uh, rotting uh, on the vine. Absolutely disgusting. So that's what we do. We provide food. We provide shelter. We fix people's clothes, and we try to provide honest work that contributes to everybody. You should come by sometime. We could really use the help. Anyone is welcome. Hey, you. Give him, like, the nudge. What's up, boss? Boss? Hi. Well, what's up, buddy? You know, the generic boss, not the hierarchical boss. Yeah, like... <laughs> but I say, I haven't been called boss in a while. No. I, you I, you I, have uh, bo bo boss baby vibes. feel like these uh, <laughs> will be wet. It's not really worth that time. Well, if they're Trying hiring... To... I, I'm like whispering this to you. I'm like, if they're hiring weak muscle like that, you know, maybe that'd be our way in. I was just about to tell yeah. them, you know. But if they're higher and weak muscle like that, then who says that we'd be uh, even worth doing our time there? Be a waste. He says, if you boys are in need, I can exchange goods for services. I know a few says, lasses who could exchange goods for services. He says, yes, all work is a form of prostitute for yourself for another person, but what I'm offering you, we're going to have a protest outside that El Torcho Museum. They're closing it to the public, saying that opening it to the common people is what allowed something awful to happen there. We're going to protest. Those things should be open to everybody. Everyone should be able to go and see the riches of this city, from the common beggar to the noble son. We could use some security. The ruby rabbits, wherever we go, we tend to draw... People that don't like us very much. You know what I'm saying? For this, I could give you a week's worth of rations. Good rations, too. I'm not kidding about that. Each. He'd yeah. give uh, that to each of you. I don't know about this, Yuli. I mean... <clears throat> Doesn't seem like it's too much work, you know? No, but it sounds like it's about to get into uh, contradictions with our current em <clears throat> with, uh, with our possible employment. Well, they won't know what's us. What time is it? Y'all haven't what been paid by either group. You're not obligated to do either. What what time's your uh Yeah 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 bitch and moan party. Forgot what you called it. Oh yeah. 
We like yeah. to call it braying and neighing, but it's starting right now, actually. And uh, our organizers are uh, trying to keep it going till sunset. I'm going to look over at Huel and whisper, didn't we have to go, there for, uh, go, go to the uh, museum for sunset? Help, uh, help them nobles protect it. Alright, we did. You were supposed to go there from now until sunset. The protest uh, is happening at the same time the guy asked you to be security at the museum. Again, you're not obligated. There's no, going to be no consequences for saying no. Yeah, I'd say we have like a previous engagement, so maybe another time we, we'll be able to help out. He says, well, it takes time for everybody to come around to our way of thinking. It is nice to meet the two of you. And remember, you're not a rabbit, or you're a rabbit, and you can't let these wolves feast on you. Shake his hand. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna His hand walk. is uh, uh, wet and slimy, and actually, when you touch it, your hand goes numb just for a little bit. I'm gonna walk away, <laughs> shaking my head, just <laughs> muttering under my breath. Well, I mean, I'll let it. Oh, I'm an iron eater. Let it. Is. Okay. So, what did y'all want to do? Uh, I'm gonna go, like, you, you said there was a couple, uh, like, spooky-looking guys over in the dark corner here? Yes. Oh, God, let me see if I can find this picture real quick. Oh, fuck. I had, uh, chat B GPT do this one for me. Oh, he's Just using AI! I uh, know, I felt dirty while I did it, but the results were very good. Oh, I know it's dirty when the results are good. Mm -hmm. I had to do that oh, with my brain dead Mass Effect campaign. I had to do. <laughs> yeah, you had some good AI stuff in there, though. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, character portraits, as long as you don't make it too complicated, it's good at it. But, like, I was, I'm using Microsoft's one, I forget what it's called, Copilot, and I tried to make it make a dwarf that looked like it was an emo bard, and it kept oh, giving it yeah, long, yeah, yeah. long, pointy ears. Yeah. No matter what I said. I was I, like, I thought that, yeah. ears pointy, and it does it every time. Okay, I'm uploading these to Discord right now. Oh, uh, at the bottom of these cards is the locations of the faction's headquarters. Uh, for the Castle Lanterns, it's Castle Lantern Manor and the Castle Ward. For the Ruby Rabbits, it is the Rotten Snuff Beetle Orchard and the Fields Ward. And uh, that's the only one you know about right now, even though there's another one on that card. Okay, so sitting at this table with the black and green circles are these two bards. One is an orc that has this uh, long hair uh, in a weird bun at, or a weird ponytail at the top of her head that makes her hair go in all different directions. Uh, the person sitting next to her is an elf with very pale skin and long black hair and this dark makeup around his eyes. Uh, the orc looks very tough and intimidating, and the elf looks very sad. You want to go and talk to them? Not really, no. Oh, they look really yeah, interesting. No, they they look like I mean, they were in the corner of a in a bar, be like, ooh, I'm edgy. Ooh. I mean, we're already getting paid on we're already getting paid on the clock. We might as well stop and chat to these guys before we go. Um, I guess I'll follow you. 
They said we need to get clothing. We need to like, have to stop at like a tailor's or they're going to have clothing there and we just say, you know? Sounded like you were expected to show up in all black clothes. So we're going to go to the tailor's, okay. And ask okay, these guys. No. Oh, you're going to ask them for black clothes? Are you guys tailors? Yes, no. Does anybody know prestigitation? I, I believe is prostigitation. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, no. The orc uh, just kind of crosses her arms and looks you up and down. Looks like she's judging whether she could take you in a fight. The elf uh, also looks you up and down and says, Look, Guys, I'm not really the talkative one of our group, but our money maker's out sick today. So I'll give you whatever you just asked for. You just got to do a job for us first, you know? You want us to work for clothes? Uh, yeah. A job, you say? A job. Look, it's nothing much, man, okay? Um... We just need you to transport some wine from our warehouse to, like, you know, our bar. Uh, and we just want some security to be with it because we've had some issues recently. And the city's kind of getting uh, a lot right now. Hectic these days. Yeah. As y'all are talking to them, uh, someone runs up. Uh, it is a dwarf girl. Uh, and she runs up, but we're not a dwarf girl, it's a dwarf woman, and she runs up, and she's holding uh, a tiny little lute in her hands, and she says, oh my god, or oh my gosh, it's Davil and Zaraj of the Doom Raiders, I am your biggest fans, please, please, would you go sign my lute? Uh, and she hands it over, and you'll, you recognize the Doom Raiders as one of the groups that Galanis was looking into. This is the lead singer and the drummer of the Doom Raiders. And I have not made their card yet because uh, I've been working so much. Sorry about that. She said she's asking who to sign it? These two people that you're talking to, the people oh. with the dark clothes and the makeup. She called them Dabal and, and Zaraj. And uh, they both sign it. They don't say anything as they sign it. Uh, and then they <clears throat> hand it back to her. Uh, and uh, Davil says, always nice to meet a fan. And she says, are you guys playing any shows? Are you going to play here? At, or are you going to play here at the Yawning Portal? And he says, we only play shows at our bar, the Beer Golem. And uh, she runs off and excitedly talks to her friends. And the get and the man says to you, "So, are you guys gonna like do this job, and then we'll give you clothes?" It's gonna be real quick, man. So what are you? Just a bunch of bards? Well, I'm like the best bard in the group. Old Zaraj here, she's better with a bow than she is at the drums. And he laughs a little bit, and Zaraj rolls her eyes, and she says, Zaraj has beating heart of Hunter. And beats drums. I'll show him I have a loot. I play the loot myself if you ever need a a stand-in, you know? But uh, you were talking about this job. You're saying a quick job? Can you give us some black clothes? Yeah, man. It's going to be a quick job. Look, there's a bar called uh, the Beer Golem. You travel about five blocks north of that. There's going to be a warehouse. Uh, one of our other buddies, Schemo, he's a goblin. He'll be there. He's our warehouse manager. He'll just give you a crate of wine. 
you transport it back to the beer golem and and, and we'll give you a, a, a what what was it that you're looking for Better black clothes for me and my buddy here i'll pat him oh yeah and he smiles and it's actually like a very kind smile it's even in his eyes and he says yeah we got black clothes I'll grab like another cheap drink really quick. Run back. Okay. All right. We're gonna okay. go back. To, we're gonna go back to Blinken while y'all decide what to do. Okay. Hell yeah. Blink, Blinken, you are in the El Torchal Villa Library. You are doing research on the Castle Lanterns. Yeah. Um, you've learned the location of their house. Maybe you could find something out about how it's been built. Their son died. You could look into that. Uh, you could look into the history of their finances, or you could tell me something you were thinking of looking at. Um, probably the interesting thing, probably maybe is the how that um, child died. Okay. As Volando Castellanter. Let me put it in chat. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Um, so he is the firstborn of Victoro and Amala Castle Lantern. By the way, guys, uh, you can Google things like Waterdeep. You can Google things like Xanathar. Do not Google the Castle Lanterns. You will spoil yourselves, okay? You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> I already told you this when you made your character a castle enter. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Osvaldo, uh, was born, uh, shortly after Victoro and Amala got married. Uh, Victoro and Amala originally had some troubles combining their family's businesses. Uh, getting uh, their various holdings and uh, imports and exports to work together. And as such, they were going through a very difficult time financially, but they were overjoyed to welcome their firstborn son, Os Osvalando, into the world. Um, a few years after that, when Osvalando was four, they gave birth to twins. The twins are called Terenzio and El Zer. El Zarina, Castle Lantern. Um, five years after that, when Osvalando was nine, he very suddenly got sick and died. Castle Lantern's very distraught and very upset. The city held a public uh, a mourning for Osvalando. After this, the Castle Lanterns were rarely seen in public life again, choosing to focus on their two remaining children and on their business. In the 10 years since uh, Osvaldo died, uh, uh, Castle Lanterns have been able to turn their holdings around, uh, reclaiming their spot as the top noble family of Waterdeep. Uh, Osvaldo, Terenzio, and El Zirina all attended the same school. And for right now, I'm going to call that El Torchal Academy. Or, I'm sorry, that was not 10 years ago. That was five years ago. Osvaldo died five years ago when he was nine years old on the cusp of his 10th birthday. Okay. I'm sorry, on the day of his 10th birthday. Uh, reading a newspaper article from the time, you can say, there was no reporting. There was no reporting from the family of any health problems with Osvaldo before this tragic news struck. It appears that even the nobles can be struck by random tragedy.
Lincoln. I'm also going to say that you find a picture or a painting of the Castellanters with their two remaining children. Okay. Hmm? This is not in any book. It's actually hanging up on the wall. It's about four feet high, six feet across. And underneath it, it says, Funders of the Villa, uh, Lord and Lady Castellanter. Is there anything else you would like to uh, research in this library? Um, probably, oh, one more thing, probably the financial stuff later, but like, um, I was, you know, later I was thinking about like, um, you know, obviously getting research about, um, more in depth of hopefully like uh the the golden dragon um uh, our next and see if I could get some ideas of um you know where would uh uh maybe he had like some because I don't know who they are, maybe he had some enemies or something that stole his eyes or something mm -hmm. so maybe a little bit of research on that. So, Aranax was an adult gold dragon, about 160 years old. Uh, when he made his way to Waterdeep. He was uh, one of the very few dragons that were welcome in Waterdeep after uh, the dragon Agahiron's dragon ward went around the city. Um, it is thought that he was able to get into the city because he was old friends with the Never Ember family, and the open lord of Waterdeep at the time was a man named Dagult Never Ember. Um, it is rumored that all around the city there are people that are dragons in disguise, people that have been led into the city under uh, previous open lords. Uh, some speculate that the dragons secretly control the city. Other people just live in wonder that at any moment they could be walking past a person uh, who is actually a dragon. Since Aranax went missing 20 years ago, rumors have spread about what happened to him but a lot has come to light of what he used to do when he was in the city. He walked around as a dwarf named Barak Clanghammer. I'll send you a screenshot of that. Uh, it is said that in his dragon form, he protected the gold of Waterdeep, uh, keeping watch over the various minting houses and keeping uh, watch over Waterdeep's gold reserves uh, during times of crisis or when uh, the city was under attack. He was good friends with a few adventurers, and he was known to set out to help people uh, that really needed the help. He was very good friends with Tyrion the Monk and Meryl the Dragon Mage, both of whom are dead now. Um, there was an incident about 25 years ago when one of Aranax's human apprentices, a man named Chadwick, drunkenly revealed the location of the dragon staff of Agahira. 
the only thing that can let a dragon pass through the city. Uh, this person named Chadwick drunkenly revealed the location of that to a member of the Cult of the Dragons. He was promptly kidnapped, and as the cult prepared to raid Aranax's vault, Aranax and a group of adventurers uh, flew in and managed to rescue Chadwick. And the adventurers were uh, blessed by Aranax and were told that uh, if they ever needed his help, he would be there. So Aranex would have been about 150 at the point that he, or 180 at the point that he disappeared. Okay. There are, you can read about Aranex uh, and his adventures and a lot of his uh, companions uh, in things such as Waterdeep in the North. The God Catcher, written by a bard named Aaron Evans, or The Hall of Heroes, written by a bard named Ed Greenwood. Uh, Aaron Axe appears to pop up all around uh, Waterdeep. Anytime something is going down in Waterdeep in the past, you know, 60 uh, ish years, he's been there uh, to make sure that the city stays safe. Or that's no fun. He's been in the city a hundred years, keeping it safe. Um... I'll say, uh, Blinken, as you read on, you notice that one of those relationships he had uh, was with a person whose name has been lost to history, but apparently he mentored a ranger uh, who called himself a dragon warden. Okay. Um, oh, shit. There was one thing I forgot. Aranax used to live in the Dragon Tower, which is in, which is in the Sea Ward of Waterdeep. It is a wizard's tower located on the street of the Singing, singing Dolphin. It was owned by Meryl the Dragon Mage. Uh, being in El Tortural Villa, you are actually in the Sea Ward. If you wanted to, you could go and see the Dragon Tower. Yeah, I could probably swing by there and check it out. Okay, uh, as you walk up to it, it is going to be close to the... Where's Roll20? It's going to be close to the edge of Waterdeep. Uh, right next to the city wall, there is a long or a very tall tower that reaches up over the wall and would have a great view of the ocean outside. You notice that the bridge uh, leading up to this tower is blocked off and there are members of the city watch uh, standing outside of it with their little copper badges and a big sign that says, No one is permitted to enter Dragon or the... What was it called? No one is permitted to enter Dragon Tower. Beware. Uh, many, many creatures are within, and there are rumors from Elminster himself that there are wraiths all over the tower. Do not go in to Dragon Tower. Okay, I'll uh, take note of that.
Okay. What would you like to do next? Um. All right. Um. I think at that point I have a lot of information. I'll probably head back to uh, the uh, yawning portal. See what the other guys are up to while you know trying to ponder what's uh, what to do with the uh, dragon situation. Maybe see if I could communicate it at some point. Hopefully, but. That's what my, you know, that's what his brain is um, thinking while he's walking towards the yawning portal. Okay. You're racking your mind over all this research you did. Uh, seeing Dragon Tower, it reminded you of when you were a kid and you saw Aranax himself leap out of that tower during the Founder's Day Parade. The way that his uh, golden scales shone uh, in the fireworks and all the lamplight, it was magical to you as a kid. You walk back into the awning portal, and you notice that Dwarf from earlier and your friend Huel are sitting at the bar, arguing about what they're going to do next. You can join them. What do you guys do? We go move this luggage. Easy peasy, we get the black clothes. Then we go do the castle enter. Joe. Why are you trying to fight with me, Thorgan? You want to oh, fight? What, what's what? going on? What, 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 what are we doing? What? I'm a, I'll Who's grab... If? I grab a stool, like he picks up with his foot, you know, like they throw it up in the air and they, they catch it. He does that and he starts walking towards like the the other table. He's like, that girl was eyeballing me. She was right. He's like, at that, um. Zahara. Zahar? Zahar? Zahar. her name? Zahar, sorry. You say that she's eyeballing you? She was earlier. You remember, since she was like, look at us to fight. I looked you eyeball in my boy. And I'm gonna charge her. Yeah. No, I was gonna say he was just got the liquid courage and messing around. Oh, as I thought soon as you he sees blinking. No. He's like, okay. blinking, hey, he grabs him by the shoulder. He's like, What's up, man? She sees you two doing this, and the mug of beer that she's drinking out of is massive. She raises it up, she chugs it empty, and then slams it on the table with a loud thud that vibrates the very floor you're standing on. You know that this woman is very powerful, and it would probably be a bad idea to fight her. Oh, no, I was, I was only messing around. <laughs> I oh, went over to Blinken yeah. and hide behind him right away. You know, I don't like walks normally, but... Uh... She seems like a fine woman. All right, well, Blinken, since you're in the Yawning Portal, would you like to talk to any of these factions? Um, no, not not specifically. I'll, I'll uh, talk to, you know, the, the the guys here and be like, you know, what, what, what type of information have you gotten? You know, have you gotten any progress? I, I, I you know, I'll share my information, you know, type of thing. And uh, basically, you know, Castle Lanterns, Pretty fucked up. But besides the point, what what do you all have? What are these are jobs that you're doing? What what what's going on here? The rumor ballots are asking us to do some protests for some rations. Uh um... the the castle lanterns asked us to do a protection job at the a museum. That might be intriguing. And then finally, the couple over there. Oh, Just with the, the two of them. The, the guy that's wearing mascara. Yeah, him. He said they give us some black clothes if we uh. You just deliver some uh, uh, some wine. I think they said. Hmm. Hey. My my question is, why can't we just go to a tailor? <laughs> Not saying I want to help the boy band, but uh It gets us in with the Doom Raiders. The who haters? The Doom Raiders. You get too much you get too much to drink Thorgan as he's running they... around with the stool in his hand. Do they actually raid tombs? I don't I don't get it. What is this? No, 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 he's saying doom as as in uh 
like yeah. Doomsday. Yeah, okay. like Doomsday. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, they were not... tombs. No, no, not 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 tomb, dome. Oh, okay, okay. No, I I can I can see how you understand misunderstood that. Yeah, I mean that sounded more you... cool, but Doom Raiders, I don't know. Yeah, Hewley here has been uh, double fisting. Hmm. He he has had a bit to drink. Yeah, you should probably slow down on that, buddy. Uh, I mean, it's mostly tea he's been drinking. Oh. It's, you know, I'm alert, but I'm also feeling tipsy, you know? Yeah, tipsy. Huh? You know, if he was a putty tat, he would have died. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So funny inside jokes here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, you, you deal with that. Uh, I mean, if you need any help, I can come with. I don't know if you need well, help. I mean, you want to make some gold. Why not? Yeah, but, uh, we're offered, uh, tree gold to go, uh, help, def uh, pr pr uh, bodyguard the, uh, mat, um, museum. You alright? No, I'm having a strunk. Oh. No, they, they want us to, uh, guard the museum from now to mid uh, midnight. Uh, okay. three gold plus a free night at the end. Alright. And these... Weirdos want us to, uh, deliver wine from their warehouse to the bar. Oh, to our bar. Their bar. Oh, their bar. Okay. Their bar. Yeah, yeah. deliver the wine to a schemo. Yeah, uh, Steve Goblin is a, member, is a member of their band at their warehouse. You're going to pick it up and take it to their uh, bar called the Beer Golem. And they'll give us some black clothes so we don't have to go to the tailor. And hopefully they're not... I point to Davo. And I say, hopefully they're not his clothing. Yeah, I, don't want his, I don't want his pants. Like the skin tight clothes. They are, they are tight black leather pants. Perfect. I don't I don't think that I look he, at that. He skips like that. Hmm. Pretty scrawny. Uh, but uh yeah. So we can either deliver the wine, do that, or we can head to Taylor, get, you know, proper black clothes. Then go to the museum and uh, guard it till midnight and get paid. Well, I, I suppose. Oh, yeah, sundown. Sorry, we didn't tell you everything. And then the wooby wabbits. That that frog guy, right? Uh he uh he wanted us to help uh protest at at the museum. Are we, are, we, are we guarding for this protest? Well, the protest is now till, you know, sunset, which would overlap with our job at the museum. We don't necessarily need the rations either for the ruby rabbits. Yeah, they're, they're paying us a week's of rations each. But, you know, don't really need food. Yeah, yeah. Need gold. That and who I mean, a week's a rations... A week's rations is worth a bit. Breakfast, dinner, and lunch for a week. Mm, I was thinking about splitting up, but that's not... I wouldn't even suggest that, like, in character. Like, not a good idea. I know it's a protest, and, you know, it's not too wild, but... Oh, uh, no, I've, I've seen some protests get fucking hairy. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we should stick together, whatever we do. We're just going to go to the tailors and skip the, the stuff for the Doom Raiders, or just... It's up to... um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having your hand in a bit of every uh, all the pies, you know? Dabble in all the can... groups. We just deliver the wine quick. Yeah. Go to we the museum. Bring the wine, get the clothes, don't necessarily have to, you know, join the band. And then, you know, we can get paid. 
maybe we can skim some uh, wine off the top. Yeah, maybe one one of the barrels fell and cracked open on the street. Maybe it made its way into our pockets. There you go. Mm. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'll be okay with that. Um, uh, I mean, I'll do we want them. to see what the other the other groups want while here? I mean, you know. I guess I it mean, wouldn't hurt. If we're doing security for the museum, we might as well figure out who tried to rob it last night. Quite, yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it would, it would, like, for that, we might as well. Yeah, maybe we'll get some information about that. I'd look at Hill. Mm. Who knows, maybe if uh, we find out some good info about the ones who robbed it, and get us in on the next job. Don't necessarily have to turn them in, do we? Get there before them. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dastardly bastards. Bastardly dastards. Yes. So what's the plan in the immediate? Are we going to deliver this this I casket think, of wine? I think probably the wine would be easy or quick and then deal with the museum, right? We'll get the black clothing. Yeah, me, me, me thoughts exactly. Get the wine, get the clothes, and then, you know, we can either decide to help the museum or... Okay, yeah, we can do that. Rabbits. Okay, so, um, uh, y'all leave from, uh, the Yawning Portal, and you make your way over to the Southern Ward. Uh, the Doom Raiders tell you, uh, that their bar is near Colot Towers. You get there, you find their bar, and you walk up, like he said, about five blocks up to the Street of Smiths. When you get there, you're at a warehouse, uh, and the warehouse uh, says uh, Beer Gollum Warehouse uh, on a sign painted uh, in black and white outside. Uh, there is a goblin uh, who has uh, a lot of piercings in his ear and some black makeup underneath his eyes. But even with that black makeup, you can tell he looks really, really tired. This is Schemo, Schemo Weird Bottle. And he is the man that you're supposed to talk to. What do you do? So we, we, we talked to this fellow or what? Yeah, I'll walk up, I'll give him the nod, I'll be like, Zahara sent us. We're here for the wine. He says, oh, good. The beer golem ran out of wine last night. I drank it all. Here, here's your cart. Walk five blocks south. You'll see a lot of signs for it. There are even some boards of paintings of me and my buddies on it. He says, when you get there, there's going to be a dwarf uh, at the bar. Uh, named Istrid. She'll be able to uh, get you whatever you agree to. Uh, and he brings out a little cart. It's one of those, it's got two wheels in the middle and it's got a handle, so you kind of like pick it up and you're able to just pull it along. Uh, in the back are four crates of wine that have eight bottles of wine each. They're all of various mixes and they range from cheap to decent. None of them good. Let's chop it down, make sure it's all in there. Let me uh, blow my nose and use the bathroom real quick. All right, five minute break. Book five? Yeah, sounds good. All right, sounds five good. minute break. Wait. Breaking the fourth wall there a minute ago was <laughs> too many inside jokes. <laughs> Uh, you keep you keep you keep pounding back the drinks like that. You're gonna be pissing on the porch. <laughs> right, I'll, okay. I'll try to incorporate it somehow, but like that would've been good. Yeah. Uh speaking of letting one go on the porch, I'm gonna run to the washroom. Yeah, go yeah. on the porch was faster. Oh yeah, true. Walk outside. <laughs> God damn it.
If I used enlarge and reduce on something with liquid inside, would the liquid enlarge in size as well? Or just the bottle? I mean, I think that's a DM question, honestly. I'm thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's a question for a DM. Maybe Brax can weigh in. I mean, if I was a DM, it's probably going to make the bottle larger if you're telling your person. Yeah, because it's not like... But what if you use enlarge and reduce on a piece of steak? Would it enlarge the steak? But that does say it's a creature. Yeah. Or an object, though. Can't be worn or carried. Um, I think I would say for a non-magical common thing, like a bottle of wine, you can increase the whole thing. But the magic might mess with the taste of the wine. I was gonna say, yeah, something's probably gonna get weird with it. Maybe I will. Like it reduces inside someone's body and then it's all weird. <laughs> the bottle I can see, like the bottle just increasing. The volume of the liquid inside doesn't. <clears throat> Okay, one second. Uno. Dose. Watro. <laughs> Says. Well, fuck you. No, you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are in the southern ward of Waterdeep, uh, named after the southern family of nobles. <clears throat> so uh, dust and mud uh, cover the streets here, and most of the buildings here are old. There are a bunch of multi-story tenants, uh, tenements with shops or businesses on the ground floor. There are many people moving in and out of this ward. It's very, very busy. Uh, you notice that traffic is less directed here. Uh, there are not many members of the Street Directors Guild here. Uh, you also notice that there are less uh, members of the City Watch than normal. As you are pulling this cart along, it's really only fun blocks. Uh, you're walking along the high road, which is one of the main roads that goes from the south to the north of Waterdeep. Did y'all want to do anything with this cart while you are walking down the high road? Well, I was kind of just looking at it. Oops, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, let's first off decide who's pulling it. He will, yeah, he's definitely the, the halfling. The halfling? Okay. <laughs> he's, he pulled a cart across town before. So, uh, for... <laughs> with, with like, Huel pulling the cart, I'm going to be sitting on it, eyeing the wine. 
Uh, this one has four <clears throat> wheels this time. Huel, as you are pulling on the cart, Destry's raven lands upon your head and says, Pull faster, pull faster. Make a delivery, get gold. Move fast enough, you have time for another delivery. Make True, more. bird. Faster, faster. This sounds like getting in his face, and he like pulls it back. As he does, he's like, yeah, shoot, get out of here! <laughs> Alright. Uh, Blinken, I assume you also left uh, your dragon spawn behind again? Yes. Okay. Well, Y'all walk further and further down the street, and you get closer to Colap Towers. Uh, Blinken, you're just on a tour of Waterdeep's wizard towers today. Colat Towers is uh, strange and mysterious. Uh, you know, a few years ago, it was found out that the evil wizard, wizard Manshun, had been living in these towers for many years. Uh, you don't remember who, but some group of adventurers got rid of them. Anyway, you know that the uh, the beer golem is very close by to these towers. If y'all wanted to do anything with this wine, uh, you would have to do it soon. <laughs> Okay. Did y'all want to do anything? Uh, not me Please. specifically. I thought there was talk of uh, enlarging it. I was gonna say I'm just I'll be just looking at it to kind of mess with it, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. Okay. You know that each crate, if you sold all the bottles on it together, would probably get you like two or three gold coins at most. All right, so you cut through an alleyway and you make your way over to a bar called the Beer Golem. And you notice outside of it, there are wooden uh, boards that have painted on it the image of Davil Star Song, um, Zaraj the Hunter, uh, and uh, Schema Weird Bottle, and a woman named Istrid Horn. Uh, it appears to be a little bit of an old painting, and getting close you can see that the details on uh, Davil's face are, or on Zaraj's face, are in this painting she looks a lot younger than she did at the bar. Let me get y'all a picture. And you see underneath it, it says, Legendary Heroes, Legendary Musicians. Um, the beer golem has the door propped open. Uh, it's like, you know, maybe one o'clock in the afternoon, so it's not really open yet. What do y'all do? So we, we just brought the beer to the bar and it's not open. No, the door's propped open. Uh, uh, you see a little sign on it that says deliveries and it has an arrow pointing to that door. Oh, well, shall we? Yeah, I'm assuming we had to deliver the beer, so... Alright, you open the door. Uh, the bar is closed. You notice that uh, half of the chairs around the tables here have been put up uh, back on the table like they do at restaurants when they close. The other half of the chairs are just thrown about uh, the bar. Some of them are uh, on their backs on the floor. Some of them have been uh, broken. Uh, you see that in one corner of the bar, there's the actual bar where they make drinks. But the other corner of the bar, there is a very big stage. On it is a couple of lutes and a set of drums and a piano that appears to be built into the stage. Uh, at the bar, there is a dwarven woman uh, who looks a little bit sick. And she says, Oi, are you the, <clears throat> are you the ones that Davil sent with our wine? Uh, 
I'm going to insight. All right. Before I say that, oh. yeah, go ahead. Are they okay, expecting anyone else? Go ahead and roll that insight. Oh, I a did. 10? It's a 10. I mean, it's a business, man. People come in and out all the time. I'm looking in fascination. I like the stage as I'm walking in. But yeah, um, Schemo sent us. And can I, like, help him with that insight? Can he roll again if I'm, like, helping him, like, look yeah. around? Yeah, he'll go ahead and roll one. Okay, with that, when you yeah, mention you Schemo, you see her grimace and say, Ah, oh, well, at least he showed up for work today. Trying to give, like, blinking in, Thorgan the look, look like it seems to be good, but kind of keep an eye out, if that makes sense. What, you, you're saying this man doesn't do his job? She says, oh, what, do you not read the rumors and trades around? Schemo hasn't played a show with us in years. I'd be lying if I said I read that. She said, look, uh, what did Davil say that he would give you for these? Um, uh, he, he, he told us a, a gold H, and he would supply us with a pair of black clothes. All, all three of us. Yeah, all, all three. And I'm going to uh, hold up four fingers. Thor drum. <laughs> no, no, all three. Uh, Thor drum, roll a deception check. I'm, I'm going to lower my and, pinky. Sorry, uh, uh, it was three of us. I'm going to be on the stage playing like the loot. Can I bardically inspire him? Yeah. Just give him the D6. Yeah. I'm just testing the instrument. Like, da, 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 da. I cast it stealthily. Like, uh, 1D6? Yep. I'll add the, the charge usage. 11. 11? She says, he's always promising odd things. Okay. Uh, and she dips behind the bar, and you hear uh, the sound of some coins ruffling. You hear the sound of a lot of coins rustling around in a bag, actually. And then she pulls out three gold coins and slides them across the table to you. And says, uh, and she turns around and she starts opening up some cabinets. And she pulls out this wooden crate. Uh, and inside the wooden crate are a bunch of uh, black leather pants and uh, black shirts that have hand sewn onto them the Doom Raiders. She says, uh, yeah, we have some of our merch still here. Would this be acceptable? Uh, we, we were kind of open for just like plain black clothing, like, yeah. you know, like so linens. Without, without the logos, it's she, solid black. She, she, takes that, she takes that cloth shirt and she pulls it inside out. I Does mean, that... Bit? Is it like like lines where like you know when the stitching's popping out, or is it like solid black? Uh, there's little lines, uh, but it's made with uh, black stitching. Uh, so it looks white on the front, but on the back it's black. Ew. I mean, if we just keep our backs turned to the wall, and you know, maybe they'll yeah. notice. No, when it's turned inside out, it looks black all the way around. If someone got close okay. to you, they could see the stitching on it, but the stitching visible when it's turned inside out is black. I got you. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, is it, a deal's a deal, um, right? You, so... um, real quick, Huel, when you start playing uh, your little loot uh, up there, go ahead and roll a performance check. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Uh-oh, Huel's world gets busted. Oh no, the not one. That's crazy. No, really? Oh, oh. No, it's still a seven. My plus still seven. One, your plus six. No, yeah. that one's that one. Wait, yeah. are you a halfling? Can you reroll? 
Oh yeah, you got luck. With Half life can reroll uh, ones. Uh, what is that a feature? Know. Yes, it's a, uh, that's racial. a racial racial feature. Yeah, you're lucky. Half-lings. You get to reroll a one. Halfling luck, yeah. I see. But, huh. All right, so like it sounds really trash at first. Yeah, your first note is like sharp, like really sharp. Yeah, that don't sound. I roll again. That's no. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, hey, it's plus six. So, um, you know, you don't do your best. No. You're a little bit rusty. Uh, but you manage to you play out a little tune. Uh, and you notice that as you do that, Istrid hums along in a perfect matching to you. She's not only like humming uh, in the same notes as you, she's actually going with you. Like she seems to understand music so much that she can uh, predict your next note and know where you're going with your melody. Uh, it's uh, very charming and pleasant. Oh, he plays me for a little bit, not just for the bar, but he keeps playing through the tune. And uh, for a moment there, she begins to sing, uh, For I have a painting, a perfect one of you. My fair lady, count me as well. Uh, And she gets lost in her thought, and she says, Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that, boys. Uh, Here's your gold. Here's your black clothes. Um, And hey, man, if you ever want to come by, we do open mics. We love musicians around here. There aren't enough these days. You have a painting, a fair one of you. Are you singing a tune? Yeah, uh, one of our old hits. Actually, our oldest hit. The one that made us famous. It was called uh, Lady Mana. Would you, would you like to hear the rest of it? Uh, you will don't forget that we have a job we have to go do. Well, it'll take that long to hear a song, you know? You could always come back. I, like, kick the stool over to him so, like, he sits down and I'll sit down. I mean, if you want to some of the wine, I, I could listen. Oh, oh, oh All right. Right. drinks. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm we have a time for jam. a drink and a song. Yeah. Uh, she uncorks one of the bottles of wine and just slides it across the table to you and says, hey, there you go. Enjoy that, too. And she steps up on stage, uh, and she goes up next to the drum kit, and she taps it four times, finding her rhythm, and she begins singing. She is the backup singer for the Doom Raiders. And she says, For I have a painting, a perfect one of you. My fair lady, count me as well. There's a story at the bottom of this bottle, and I'm your quill. And she starts banging her head up and down on the stage, uh, singing their hit single, Lady Maria. I'm not going to do the whole song. Yeah, You're, he's cheering afterwards. He's like, <laughs> he's loving it. Just like clapping in time, you know, with the beat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Okay, she's going to roll a performance check. I feel like she should have to do that. And then I don't have her character sheet up, but she is a level three bard. Uh, so I'd say she did she pretty decent add. with that, yeah. Yeah, so she would add a two to that. Oh, not roll two more dice, but add a two to that. So she sings through the whole song, and she gets to the bridge, and she stops, like, singing. Uh, uh, for the performance, and she starts really singing from her heart. And you can tell that these next words mean a lot to her. And it's, she says, Make it count when I'm the one that's selling you out. Because it feels like stealing. I'm drawing your name from the crowd. And that looks like it has a lot of personal meaning to her. She kind of like sings it and belts it out, almost like she's She's yelling it, but she's still maintaining these notes with this beautiful voice. So, uh, he will 
Blinkin. 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 Yeah. So, uh, I, I feel like maybe after we do this job at the, uh, the museum, come back here and have a few drinks. See if they need some, uh, some muscle when the bar opens. Well, yeah. For sure. We'll have some, not to say leeway, but some, they'll know who we are when we come back, you know? Yeah, I mean, we already did a job for them, you know. We can tolerate the singing. And, uh, oh, we've got the gear on. Hey, just pay us a couple gold to sit around, make sure nothing, you know, gets done to the bar. And maybe we can have a few drinks while we're on the job. I will cheer some more drinks and I'll cheers them quick and I'll finish mine. The more drinks! <laughs> okay. As y'all wrap up uh, your time in this bar, uh, Istrid uh, comes back over and she talks to you for a bit. Y'all are quite jovial. And she says, of course, you're welcome back anytime. Uh, as y'all leave this bar and begin making your way north uh, up the way of the dragon, someone comes uh, running out of an alleyway next to the beer golem. Uh, it is a very tall uh, person. What's a tall race? Elves, humans. I mean, a human half, would be taller than all of us. Or um, a half, a male half orc uh, with a green, a pale green skin. Uh, comes running uh, up to you, uh, and they're wearing ratty, tatted clothes. They have an eye patch over one of their eyes, and they say, uh, "Hey, fellas, I uh, was wondering if y'all wanted to buy uh, any of that silk root powder." Uh, no, no. What is? I mean, what is Man, silk root powder? You know that silk root powder is the... Oh, shoot, you weren't here for the session. It's cocaine. Oh, I'm new to these parts, so I don't know all the new lingo, you know, booger sugar and all this and you, that. Us as players would know it as cocaine. It's called silk root powder in uh, the Forgotten Realms. Oh, you, you, oh. you mean, are you, are you talking about Night's Veil? Vale? How much? Yeah, how much you want oh, for this yeah, silk root powder? Huh? What you say? Uh, he, first, he says uh, it's a uh, Thor, Thordrin. Uh, oh, are you from the south? Might be. He goes, hey, I'm from there too, man. Nice to meet you. Um, and as for your question, uh, there, little guy, uh, this is some fine, fine silk root powder. I could sell you, you know, uh, a baggie worth of it for about a gold piece, or you could do a little job for me. Mm. It would take a few hours, though. How many? How much you want for it? One gold right. for a baggie. How big's the baggie? Uh. Quarter ounce. How many bags you got? It's just, uh, <laughs> I actually, uh, I have uh, uh, three ounces on me. So you got a lot. Okay. I'm only looking to buy five, five drugs. I mean, five silk root powder. Five drugs. I would like five drugs, please, Mr. Drug Dealer, sir. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, City Watch, I don't look him up and down. Can I insight him really quick? He goes, oh, no, 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 buddy. And hey, if you're down to party, let me tell you what. Me and my crew, we got a really good job lined up for the night. Could I use you for the rest of the day? Uh, it would be five gold for f for five drugs. Oh, yeah. He, I, I'm weighing it. Like, I'm getting the five pieces. He's here. Little clanking of the pieces, and I, I buy it. So he hands you one and one quarter ounces of silk root powder. <laughs> Street value, five gold. Thank you for your business, my friend. I think it just lets out a loud sigh and be like, ah, oh, whatever. 
it. Uh, okay. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm gonna use it. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna use this. I put it away. Okay. And, uh, for that job, friend. What, I can't just agree outright. What's a prior engagement? We have prior engagement. Uh, so sure, that's all of us. Look, me and my crew uh, will pay better than any of your prior engagements. But job's pretty dangerous. You down for some awesome? Who, who's your group? <clears throat> well, me and my three new friends here. Any points to the three of you? I'm just gonna walk away. <laughs> yeah, it was nice doing business. If we, I'll come back. Um, we have other engagements, like I said. You can see we're all matching, dressed in black clothing here. We're on our way to a, a job. Uh, 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 and he keeps saying stuff, but y'all walk away. I was Ooh. actually going to stop and ask him a few things. As yeah, the party yeah. walks off, I was going to run I, up and catch up. I wasn't um, like fully gone. Uh, I was kind of just yelling at him. But real, right. real quick, real quick. Kuehl, as you walk away, uh, Blinken doesn't see this because he's turning away. And uh, Throm doesn't see this because he's uh, checking his corners and everything. But Huel, you see this uh, half orc man look over to the entrance of the beer golem, where Ishrid Horn is standing in the doorway, and they exchange a brief look. And the orc shrugs its shoulders, and Ishrid rolls his eyes, rolls her eyes, and goes back into the bar. Okay. Uh, uh, Thor Drun, what did you want to do? So uh, you mentioned it, Arson. He goes, let, yeah, let, yeah, let, let, let's say we uh, blow off our job, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. What would be uh, burnt down? Look, you don't got to worry yourself with questions like that. Only question you need to ask me is, how much does it pay? Yeah, except I just met you, and I trust you as far as I can toss you, so... Look, there's somebody in this city that I don't really like that much. So I'm gonna fuck with his organization. Not those ruby rabbit fuckers, is it? Who the fuck are the ruby rabbits? Not that uh, bad, Thorgan. Bunch of assholes. Want to be vigilantes. You said you were robbed by them? That's not vigilantes. Oh no. That's <laughs> criminal. No, we cause we talked to them, right? And they said that they wanted to bring down the government and, you know, instill their own sense of peasant utopia and... Bollocks! All of it. This isn't no fairy yeah. tale. This isn't Robin Hood. You can't just rob people. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I'm just saying what they told me. Uh, just a second. Look, all I want to know, a little bit of information regarding the the job. It's simple. All you right. Know, yes or no will be uh, all right. provided. There's a warehouse in the docks ward that I want burned to the ground. Would you be down to help me with that? I've only got one question. Who mm -hmm. owns it? Because I don't, want, I don't want to help you fuck over one of the hidden lords of the city indirectly or directly and be caught it's a, be, because we just met. It's a fisherman. He owes me uh, 15 gold pieces. I aim to get my gold pieces back in a different way. So did you just say burn down a warehouse? He has a lot of Yeah, Who yeah, would burn just down break one of his legs and then get the gold off of him? Why do you have to burn down his belt? I mean... Because I was still, like, leaving. I'm, I'm coming back listening now. 
Sorry. <laughs> yeah, wheel, wheeled back in. Yeah, I see people, I see people yeah. back. And another thing, sir. Did you know that Austin's against the law? Well, I mean... I didn't say that. I've been down on farms for less, but he has a point. That leaves permanent damage. If That's the point. Permanent damage. And it draws more attention. Break his knees. Well, uh, breaking right. his knees, it would be clear someone assaulted him. Burning down a warehouse in the docks would? Hey, that's just a street lap that broke. Caught something on fire, you know what I'm saying? Happens all the time. I got an idea, but... You gotta pass the gold up front, and this, this building will be burnt down tomorrow. Yeah, you know no. what? No to the upfront gold, and no, it happens tonight. Yeah, right. that's what I mean. By tomorrow, it will be burnt down. All right, so you know, well, I'll do it tonight. Anyways, oh. so tell us where this warehouse is. By midnight, we'll meet you back in the inn here. Where else will be burnt this. down? You'll see the smoke from the sky. And we'll collect payment there. But we do it our way. He says, uh, he'll, you see him look around first to his left and then to his right, uh, back in the direction of the beer golem. Uh, and he says, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's cleaner that way. Here, I'm just going to give you an address on a slip of paper. And I expect... That address will be nothing but a pile of ash by sunrise. Mark it down here on this uh this map here. I'll show me like, the map of the city. All right, yeah, he marks one like. Yeah, yeah, he marks an area uh in the docks ward. Make sure uh, it's the right on... building because I don't want to burn down the wrong building and then. Right. It is on Odd Street. I will take us back there when the time is right. Okay. So this is, meet me, meet me at sunrise, and I'll give you a payment: five gold pieces each. What can we call you? You can call me Shadow Man. Sorry, d d d you say Shadow Man. Shadow, Shadow Man. Man. All and right. Sorry about. Roll a d20 real quick. Is there any distinguishable yeah. features about this building, like purple roof or like... Hey guys, uh, this person just rolled a deception check and got a 1, so they are very clearly lying about their name. But you get the sense that they're lying about a lot, a lot more than that. I, I believe his birth name is Shadow Man. It's very common in uh, where I come from. I, I'm I not there. So, I, be, I believe it. I'm not yeah, there, so... Up, <laughs> yeah, I'm just wonky. If, if Thorbin wants to question it, I'm, he'll just... He doesn't even, you know, doesn't even register it. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my hand out. Bowl. Oh. What? Uh, Mole. <laughs> Is that your name? That's what you can call me. Yes, Mole. Nice to meet you. I'm Shadow no, Man. No, no, not Mole. 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 No, Mole. Mole. Mole, you deaf fuck! Uh, when you yell at them, <laughs> the person gets angry and says, You will not yell at Sarah, at Shadow Man. Sorry, what did you say? They said, you will not yell at Zara. And then they caught themselves and said, at Shadow Man. Zara. That's a name. It's a unique name. Nice to meet you, Zara. Do you say that out loud? Mm-hmm. They look a little bit concerned. 
you remember that the female orc with gray skin you met earlier was named Zaraj. So, uh, you want us to go burn down that, that warehouse, eh? Uh, he says, yeah, yeah, that's what Shadow Man wants you to do. Right, well, when we're done that, we're putting a good work to Zavri, uh, Zaji, Zar, 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 uh, da Davil, that's his name, Davil. Putting a good word for Davil for us. And they kind of wrinkle their nose at you, and they look a little bit, uh, concerned. Uh, and they nod their head. Oh, we'll see you at the inn tonight. Yeah, you'll be seeing me. I'm gonna catch up to the boys. Oh, I just pissed him off. <laughs> yeah, I caught up to Blinken, and I could hear you yelling from down the road. That's pre that's pretty uh, that's pretty wild. Uh, Thor, do you tell them what just happened? Yeah, I told them exactly what just happened. You, I heard you yelling "mole" like five times. No, it's mole. Mole. Like mole, like my mole. 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 Yeah, like a mole, like like a mole. Grab yeah. this mole and hit you in the yeah. See. See? Fuck it, kept saying mole. Yeah, like oh, right. the little the rodent thing. Yeah, little rodent. Call me a fucking pest. All right, y'all are uh, walking up the streets, up the high road, making your way to the Sea Ward to El Torchal Villa Museum. You are in some leather pants that are a little bit tight, but all black, and shirts that are equally tight but all black, all sized appropriately. Uh, Lincoln, uh, you have fun remembering that you've walked basically up and down the entirety of the city uh, in one night, or in one day. Uh, all right, y'all arrive at uh, Castle Lantern, uh, or at uh, El Torchal, uh El Torchal Villa Museum, uh, and you see uh, standing outside is that butler that you met in the yawning portal. Uh, his name was Milton, and he says, Ah, yes, our new recruits for the security team. Uh, thank you for showing up in all black. Uh, fantastic. I love people that can follow directions. He says, uh, So your job is to simply stand outside the museum and keep any riffraff or ruffians away. We are closing the museum permanently to anyone except those of noble blood. Uh, it's simply too much of a security risk to let in the common people. So, I got a question. Mm -hmm. if, if anyone gets a levy or, you know, tries to cause a ruckus, you want us just to, like, beat them? Oh, absolutely. Get them off of El Torcha Villa property. This, so, is, this is noble land. Not so, at public. So, uh, what would be considered too far? Like this? And I pull out my hand axe. Or like this, and I'm gonna wrench the, uh, the blade off the axe head so I have a club in my hand. He says, uh. when, when you pick up the axe, he raises the eyebrows. When you take the axe head off and it's just a club, he starts nodding his head. He says, yes, uh. dismemberment, disembowelment, or death, I do believe, would be a step too far. Okay, so 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 bludgeoning though. Mm -hmm. So yes, but the goal is not to knock them out and have them sleeping on our property. The goal is to hurt them so that they leave our property. Yes. Oh, so so this isn't good. And I'm gonna pull out my like drop the axe and grab the maul I had placed on the ground. So so this is not good. It is certainly intimidating. Do understand, boys, I'm not here to micromanage you or tell you how to do your jobs. You can keep riffraff away. And no, no, we're off. just trying to understand the limitations here. Like, we can clear out the riffraff pretty easy. It's whether or not you want them flowing in the streets, you know? Kind, kind of different ends of the, uh, the street. 
He says, um, you know what? Um, he wants y'all to patrol like this whole like block here that's on uh, Diamond Street and Del Zorin Street. Okay. And he kind of says, keep Riff Raff completely away from El Torcho Villa, because that's what this entire block is. It's El Torcho Villa. It has a mansion. It has the university. It has a museum and a few other things. So, so we're no longer protecting the museum. Yeah, let's say somebody walks up and they start acting rowdy. Do we, uh... Yeah, he would want us to bludgeon him. Scare him off. I do like the motion of, like, the neck breaking. No, you know, the no. The neck sound. No, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we, we get him out of here. No, you know, he, no, no, he, he said, he, he don't want him dead. He want him hurt. You know, he wants to send a message. Don't fuck around with the museum. I'll break his legs, yeah. Get him out of here, yep. I'm gonna hand you uh, one of my axes and make sure the head is taken off so you have a club. One second. <clears throat> I have like five daggers. I don't know if I'd still have them on me. Inchi would be jealous. Yeah. I don't know why I gave me the option to take that, but I did. Hmm. Okay. So as y'all talk of uh, your various bits of uh, violence that you could do, you notice that he smiles a little bit. He says, excellent. I think you boys are exactly what we need here. And he says, your relief shift will be here at sundown. Please keep any riffraff away until then. Uh, and he begins walking off down the street. How would y'all like to start patrolling the museum grounds? Well, he, um, he told us to protect the end of the street, yeah? Hey, why don't we just protect the end of the street? We just set up, like, a, a perimeter. Uh, wait, yeah. Like, one of oh. us will be, like, looking over an area that you maybe walk around. You know what we should do? So there's a bunch of, like, crates and barrels at the end there, right? Should totally just make a makeshift guard booth. Anyone who comes by, I Fuck you think you're going? Guard booth. There's crates yeah. and barrels. Crates and barrels. Yeah. yeah. You know, we'll makeshift guards, makeshift guard booth. I think that would be pretty good. <laughs> I like it. I'll start, like, getting ready to move some barrels and stuff around. All right. As y'all begin moving uh, barrels and such around, you notice that there are actually a lot of city watch around at the museum specifically. Uh, there are people coming in and out. Uh, and at one point, a big fancy carriage uh uh, parks in front of the museum, and someone gets out of it. It is a younger, uh, beautiful woman. Where is her picture? She pulls up in a fancy cart, and you notice that this cart, it's uh, designed to have a horse in front of it pulling it, but there is no horse pulling it. The wheels on it glow. Um, faint blue color as it parks itself in front of the museum, and this woman gets out. Uh, she is dressed in fine uh, uh, clothes and a leather jacket. You notice that on one of her hands uh, is a metal glove, and she has all kinds of belts with various trinkets on it. And she gets out of the cart, and she looks at a little notebook, uh, and she begins walking right into the museum. And she says, all right, all right, everybody clear out. This is a false gray area only. Get me the head of security. I have many questions for him. And she disappears inside the museum. Uh, as y'all continue uh, setting up a perimeter, uh, you start taking notice of various threats, various riffraff. You notice that on the streets around El Torchal Villa, there are many people walking. Some of them are nobles from noble family. Some of them are common people. Uh, you notice that there's a steady stream of them. But as people are getting out uh, for work for the day, uh, that steady stream kind of increases in volume. Uh, what would y'all like to be doing now? 
she was walking past all bumped like the other two fellas like you know in the movies and like a girl's walking past it's like you, you point at him you know what i mean it's like hey Ooh. check it out you know what i mean Yeah, well, I was just say take care of the riffraff. If... You know, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a family of commoners right here that have started to like gawk at the museum. You hear them say, "I hear there was a break in here last night." Uh, uh, mole in hand and a little of a barrel. I'm smashing them together and I'm running at the civvies. Holy oh, fuck off, you! <laughs> no. No, no, no lasses in the area. Only nobles and guards uh, and hired goons. The little girl jumps into her mother's arms, uh, screaming, and she looks very scared. And the mother and daughter walk away. Uh, the man uh, eyes you a little bit and then begins to walk away himself. That's a good lad. Mind your business. Anybody else want to do anything? Oh shit, I forgot the toll booth. Start running back <laughs> to the boys. I would just be telling like people walking by or looking like move along, you know what I mean? Just keeping a watch everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. That's kinda of what I'm doing. I'll just patrol up and down the street and you know, kinda of keep an eye out and be like, you know, no. Stay away from here. You know. Okay. Uh, Y'all kind of have to do that more and more as more people get off of work and start walking through the city. Um, as there are more and more people, uh, every once in a while, you see again, people stop to gawk uh, at all the City Watch officials outside the museum, at all the City Watch carts parked on the road. Uh, people are looking at uh, scrolls that you know have the daily news written on them, and they're pointing at the museum. Uh, what's your tactic for dealing with this uh, larger volume of people? We'll set up like a perimeter, like not a perimeter, but like a, a line, I imagine, like all three of us. Like, hey, so you got to move along. I got the club that he gave me, the, the axe handle. Roll an intimidation check. Uh, if y'all do it as a group, you can roll with advantage. Yeah. Or actually, I'm, all, I'm all three of you. Yeah, roll intimidation, and whoever gets the highest. No! Uh, can... That's the oh, second yeah, that one! This, this game is a scam! Yeah, man, uh, you're so intimidating. Don't don't forget, you can uh, bardically inspire. That's not gonna help! Yep. Oh, I might mean... inspire somebody else though. Oh, I, wait, I don't see your roll. Oh, there we go. It's a one. No, it's uh, a well, one. Blink, Blinken got a sixteen, so you know, add to his. I'll barnacle inspire Blinken as like you see me just sitting there patting the club in my hand, but it looks like a little with the oh. toy or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so a D six, yeah. right? Yeah, you you can roll it. Uh the usage. 21. All right. Lincoln, how would you like to scare away this larger group of spectators? Toss I would. <laughs> yeah, okay. I would probably, um, you know, give them a, a mean look, be like, away from you, from this place, and then, like, uh, you know, make up some weird story about the burnt. Mark on my hand. This is what happens when you <laughs> when you mess with with us. <laughs> yeah, you definitely scare off a few people, uh, and the crowd kind of disperses. Except you notice there are a few people who don't move at all. A few people wearing red uh, bandanas around their faces, and as uh, the crowd moves, you begin to notice every once in a while, all over, there are people with those red bandanas. And they all walk out of the crowd, and they begin walking forward. And one of them uh, is a is a turtle, a massive humanoid turtle-looking creature. And he has a big, booming voice. And he says, "The people of Waterdeep fund the nobles 
with their hard work, with their days, years, and lives spent in the field. And what do the nobles do with it? They cut us off from our history. They cut us off from our art. They cut us off from our own education because they think that they are better than us. But I say no more. Rise up, rabbits. And after he says that, everyone wearing a red scarf says, Don't let the wolves feast. What Maybe. they all do about this protest from the ruby rabbits. Maybe if you all didn't take to destroying the, uh, the histories, you know, murdering gods, claiming to be all for the people, blah, blah, blah. Fuck, my throat's getting fucked up. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to do that voice for a while, ain't it? Then, you know, wouldn't have to hire guards to keep you fuck out, uh, fuckers out. So, fuck off. Clear the way. Nobles are coming. Let us do our jobs. Go do yours. I'm going to shoot them when off with my hand. When you pick the argument with them, actually roll a perception check. Fuck! Four. All right, so he just uh, responds to you, and he says, And of course, the hired goons of these nobles, of course, look down their noses at the normal people. Anything bad that happens in the city, of course, it's the fault of every single common person who must be collectively punished. But I ask you, and he turns to the people in the crowd, and he says, If they are t to judge us collectively, what is our collective judgment of them? What do the nobles bring to this city? What could we do if they weren't, uh, if they didn't have their boots upon our necks? And you see some people in the crowd go, yeah, yeah. And then some of the nobles uh, in the crowd are like offended and gasp. Y'all are kind of losing control of this here. What do you want to do? So, so you're telling me that you lot have the brains to organize all the trades, sea routes, guard shifts, planning of the city structures, you know, setting up all the outer walls and defenses, diplomacy with other nations, and on top of that, also keeping all the riffraff out of the city like the monsters. You're all so full of shite. Just go home. You're wasting your time. Anybody else want to say something? Why don't you all have a debate in a bar down the road? But just, just keep it out of here. We don't need a, a ruckus around this place. If you've got a real problem, go... Go, uh... What, 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 fuel. what are they doing again? The protest. The protest. Oh, the protest. You all go protest in front of the, the, the castle. You know, let the lords know about it, not the, not us. Fuck all can I do about it? I'm doing my job. You protest them to the museum or artifacts and stuff or... No, I know what they're doing. All this I'm, time I'm and... telling them to go, like, harass the lords. <laughs> That's what I'm telling them, like, they're... Oh. They're protesting the time, which is the, older than all of us. Wasting your time. Yeah. Go, uh, go protest to the lords. Make them change their ways. You know, we're, we're, we're doing our job. We don't come to your place to tell you to do your job. He says, You claim that you're doing this for it is your job. You've been bribed by the nobles to turn against your own people, your own class. Well, you do this for gold, but I am doing my job, and I'm paid in another way. Dignity. Dignity for the common people of Waterdeep. Dignity for the people that make an existence outside of its walls and in its sewers. You say that we need the nobles. We need them for trade. We need them for agriculture. We need them for diplomacy. I say that that is me groveling at their feet. What do the nobles do when they want agriculture? They go and they pay peasants for it. What do they do when they want a building built? They go and they pay the common people for it. You say we can't survive without the nobles. I say... The nobles can't survive without us. And people in the crowd go, yeah, yeah. And you see people with the red bandanas go, rise up, rabbits. Rise up, rabbits. Oh, sure. Hey, on the nobles. 
You know, not like getting paid doesn't help any peasants. Oh no, we're doing a starve for the winter because we can't afford farming supplies. It's that good doesn't thing help. Shut up. <laughs> Um, does oh, anybody yeah, else want to roll an insight check on this person? Yeah, I could. I'll, I'll do it. Or can I, like, give them advantage on it? Like, help them? I'm squinting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you... Like, uh, like, boys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of on their side on this one. Like, normally I'd be at the gate, I fuck the normals, but, like... Yeah, yeah, but this is not the time go. of the place, shut up. Yeah. Hey, we're on a job. No, no, I'm just saying between us. No, I'm whispering. 18. Okay. Lincoln, with your 18, you can tell that this person wants the argument. He wants someone to argue against so that he can dominate that person rhetorically and get the crowd on his side. He's using the argument to amp up the crowd while delivering his rhetoric. Yeah, he, he wants to argue. He wants to keep taking on with the arguments. We need to squash this now. Oh, so like, just ignore him? Yeah, that, that, that's a good thing. If he keeps talking, we'll just sit there with a stone face. Oh, I, I, I can do that. I'm going to take uh, a piece of my shirt at the bottom, rip mm -hmm. off a little bit, rip that in half, twirl it, and stick it in my ears. Make uh, makeshift earplugs. <laughs> Blanken! You think this will work? I, I, I talk to him and say, I don't know, does it like kind of loud? What? <laughs> Looks like it'll work. I look at the, at the guy, the turtle. Uh, the stoic face first, see what else he's spewing about. He turns back to the crowd, and he says, Everything in that museum was funded by taxes paid by the common people, and they want to keep us from it. I say no. History is for everyone. Let's go in there and see our history. And they begin walking towards the museum, everybody in a red bandana. What do y'all do? How big's this crowd? Like, is it there a... Is it like a big enough thing where I could sneak inside while they're walking? There are six members of the Ruby Rabbits present, and then there are about 15 uh, common people gathered around them enjoying the spectacle. Hmm. You know from what your new dwarf friend said about the Ruby Rabbits? They do not seem to be well trained. I'm going to... What I was thinking of is I want to roll stealth and sneak into the crowd while they're marching towards the museum. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to fucking do something stupid, like smack him in the ass with a sword and like make sure his pants fall off type of thing so that people look at what's going on and see if uh, I could drop, drop the morale that way. Like, you know, in humiliation. <laughs> Okay. Are you trying to do any damage with the sword? No. I'm I'm just basically doing it as a um, you know, threat type thing and dropping his pants while I sneak away, you know. Okay. Uh also remember, uh uh Brax, you have one of their bandanas in your personal possession. Oh yeah. Um, I Lincoln, you as you Lincoln, as you try to sneak in and do this, I'm gonna say you need to roll a sleight of hand check instead of okay. an attack. Oh, and I'm sorry, Huel, uh, Destry's raven is perched on your shoulder. Uh, it's kind of your companion now, following you around. I just leave him there. I'm not even bothered at this point and shooting him away. I'm not worried about, like, the people. Try to okay. shoot them back, like, get him out of the... Keep him out of the museum. Oh, oh he should have 18. Okay, so with that, you successfully cut the rope that he is using to hold up his pants. 
uh, and they fall down uh, around his waist. Uh, and he is wearing, uh, you know how, like, in olden days, they, I guess they would just tie a cloth around like a loincloth? Like a loincloth, yeah. yeah. He's wearing, like, a loincloth uh, underneath that. And uh, let me roll for dick size real quick. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Um, he, uh, he turns around, uh, and he is embarrassed, and he is angry, uh, and you see he kind of gets tense, and his shoulders come up, and his head seems, his neck seems to retract a bit into his shell, and he opens up his jaw, and he looks like he's retracting a bit. It looks like all of his muscles are tensing up. What do you do? At that point, when he when he does that, like I I would personally like, you know, put my blade sideways and just smack him in the ass and say, "Get out of here before I hurt you." Are still not trying to do damage? No, I don't want to hit him. I don't want to hurt him. I'm just trying to prove a point that I don't have to hurt him to hurt him. <laughs> okay. So when you reach up to do it again. He's had it. He's hit his limit. His like neck is back in his shell, and like he's shaking. There's so much tension in his muscles, and his eyes have gone wide, and his jaw is wide open. And just as soon as you hit him on the ass, his neck snaps forward, and his mouth bites down. And you hear this loud, and the air around you almost seems to pop and vibrate as he just snapped in your direction. He stopped a few inches short of your face. You could feel the air uh, get pushed aside by how fast he moved. And for a moment, you're a little bit scared of how fast and how powerful that seemed to be. He's going to roll an intimidation check. Of course. He got a nat 20. Yep. So you are terrified by that. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to see him snap at uh, my colleague. And I'm going to bonk him. What do you mean by bonk him? I mean, I'm going to, like, run on over there, jump, raise my hammer, and bonk him. So you're going to attack him? I'm going to hit him right in the head. All right, real quick, Blinken, what do you do as he scares you? Um, I'll, stick a, I'll step back a couple of feet and it says, do that again and maybe you won't have a dick. <laughs> that, that, that's just not right. Threaten a man with a sword. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. So everyone was going for a bonk on somebody. Did he bonk him? Not yet. Oh, not yet. I enlarge uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna enlarge Thorgan. Okay. That's funny. I willingly fail the save. I know he's not doing damage, but like, he has advantage on the check. The strength uh, or whatever. Just... Oh, so you let him enlarge you, Brax? Yes, I let him enlarge me. All right, so you're about the same size as this turtle now. Go ahead and roll an attack. Right, so uh, I enrage. Uh, sorry, I enlarge. I mm -hmm. rage. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to. Oh, you're a barbarian. I'm going to recklessly swing my maul at his head. Okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. Twenty-two. Motherfucker. I didn't think y'all be attacking this guy this early. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, I'm just like bringing the hammer down on his head. Uh, Enrage mm -hmm. gives me a d4 plus damage, or is it a d6? Or enlarge, sorry. It's d4. Uh, are you doing this non-lethally, or are you, like, are you killing him? Oh, I ain't killing him. Okay. Yet. Hell yeah. Uh, 
Enlarged gives me advantage on strength checks and saving throws. And I deal an additional d4. Okay. Okay. I was right. 17. God. Fuck. <laughs> You're. 21. What the fuck? You're a level 4 character. Yeah. 2d6. Plus what? Plus 6. Plus 6? What the fuck? Plus 4. Did you min max for strength? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I am a little bit did. of a strength monkey. Yes. <laughs> Oopsie, Dave. I'm, I mean, I, I, I know this, so yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not planning on putting any more points into strength. <laughs> right, ever. You guys. It's like a max of strength. <laughs> me, me go unga boonga. That's what okay. I do. So I, I, I crack him over the head for 21 damage. Okay. Brax, with what happens next, I promise you I'm not bullshitting you. This yeah. was all written down. Okay? Mm -hmm. First of all, you hit him. Uh, at the very last moment, though, he is able to turn and make sure that you hit his shell instead of him. And instead of doing 21 damage, you do 11 damage. This is Throm Stroker Cause, the turtle leader of the Ruby Rabbits and a level 10 <laughs> fighter. But because of his hard shell, for the purposes of combat, Throm Stroker Cause is considered sturdy, meaning you have to do above 10 damage to damage him at all. So I did more than 10 damage. Yes, you did 11 damage total. Right! Does that let make that... sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Right, okay. let that be a lesson to the lot of you. Fuck off now! All right, uh, you hit him like really hard. Uh, you hear the crack as your maul hits his shell. You see him stumble under the weight of your enlarged blow, and he looks around and he looks hurt and he looks surprised that you were able to hurt him. And you see him begin to tense up again, and this rage comes into his eyes as he looks ready to fight you. Uh, and then members of the city watch step forward to back you up. Uh, noticing that a fight has broken out, and Throm Stroker looks around. He feels uh, the muscles around his shoulders, and he looks at his rabbits around him, who all look terrified. And he acknowledges that he has lost uh, uh, whatever uh, whatever ground he had made here with the people of Waterdeep. He has lost it, and he is going to take his rabbits, and he is going to run uh, east uh, out of the sea ward. Uh, they don't chant anything as they run away, and the crowd kind of shrugs their shoulders. Just a bunch of upstarts yelling nonsense, I guess. <clears throat> or, I'm sorry, the crowd is dispersing, uh, and they seem to be unimpressed with the ruby rabbits. Ju just, a bunch, just a bunch of upstarts talking nonsense. Alright, I'm going to end my rage. Okay. Well, that went well. Yeah. You almost got your face bit off, though. <laughs> That'll teach you to go near a snapper. <laughs> yeah, well, his dick was hanging. You could have kicked him. I, don't know. I mean, something that small, you'd have to find it first. Like a needle in an A stack. Hmm. Ah. Anything. Okay. We were going to do business with those fruits. <laughs> All right. The three of you now have, uh, or each faction is going to be, uh, your rank within that faction is going to be determined on a scale of negative three to plus three. You know, at negative three, you're mortal enemies. At plus three, you're best friends. At plus one, they know you, they like you. At negative one, they know you and they don't like you. You you three currently have negative one renown with the Ruby Rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the rest of the day, y'all are able to shoo people away and keep them out of uh, El Torchal Museum. Uh, that lady with the gauntlet uh, and the self-driving cart, 
uh, come out. Uh, she has a notebook, and you can see that she has filled her page up with notes. Uh, and she says, uh, she's saying to an assistant that's walking by her, Okay, the Merkmeyer stone was robbed. It appears a lot of the stuff from the basement has gone missing, as well as everything from the cash tills. What I believe the problem here was, is the magic powder they are using to lock the doors. Perhaps we could go back to the lab and make something a bit more advanced to distribute across all of Waterdeep. Uh, and she walks past the three of you. Uh, Huel and Blinken, you would know that she is talking about the break-in y'all did last night. Yep. Do you say anything to her? I just nod, like, you know. I nod too. I don't say a word. <laughs> yep, I just nod. My jaw's on you know, the floor. Yeah, she's strikingly beautiful, like, incredibly beautiful. Uh, and you notice that, unlike a noble, she actually returns your nod and gives you a polite smile. Uh, she gets in her cart, and it begins driving itself away uh, as those wheels blow a, a bright or a light blue. Uh, towards sundown, Milton uh, comes back to the museum with three other people dressed in all black, and he says, Well, well, boys, I heard that there was a bit of riffraff out here, but that you guys took to it and managed to clear it all out. The investigation into the museum robbery is going very smooth, and I want to thank the three of you for showing up and doing an honest day's work. It's so hard to find good help these days. And he hands each of you three gold coins. Nice. You all have plus one renown with the castle lanterns. Uh, I, I and you paid for our uh, our rooms at the the bar, yeah, for the night. Uh, yes, I paid for one room tonight uh, for the yawning portal. Uh, it is reserved under the name Milton. Cheers. He says, don't spend it all in one place, boys. Uh, and he uh, informs the new guards what they're going to be doing tonight, and he wishes y'all on your way. Uh, being done with your job at El Torchal Villa, what do you do now? Uh, you said it was five gold? Huh? How much gold did we get, sorry? Uh, three. You got three. Three, okay. Each of you got three gold. Well, um... I say we, uh, we hit the portal, change back into our, you know, clothes, and, uh, got ourselves a warehouse to fuck with. Yeah. It won't be a busy night, lads. Let's do it. How much coal was that? Uh, Five? Three. Three. <clears throat> three. 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 Sorry. Three. The orc that was outside of the bar, the beer golem, offered to pay you five gold coins each for burning down a fisherman's warehouse. But you know that orc was lying to you. We're still going to burn it down, though? Um, yeah, we're still going to go burn it down. But we're going to wear yeah, disguises. Let's go, let's go do that quick. I mean, we're still in the black clothing. So, so let's, uh, let's go spend, like, you know, a dragon each. Go, uh, hit, hit the tailor, grab some red clothes. I got a plan. A, 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 a red banner type situation, I see. Yeah, I got a plan. So, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna go, uh, to a tailor's and grab some, uh, red clothes. Fantastic. Just, just commoner clothes, but red. We talking red pants and a red shirt? Yep. Fantastic. Red pants, red shirt. I'm going to dress like a tiny Ryu from Street, Street Fighter. Okay. There we go. Is <laughs> anybody doing an, an, an all red cloak? Um, I will. I'm going to make sure that we have uh, cloth scrap, like red cloth scrap that we can use as masks. Okay. You also have that red band. I have mine, yes. So I, I'm going to okay. use mine. Right. Okay. So let, let's go on down to the dock. It's getting dark out. All we have to do yep. is take one of the uh, the, the lanterns yeah. right off the post. Because they're all oil. 
Take that oil. Well, Holy. sorry. Sorry for the no, show. No, no, I, mean, no. I, didn't, I didn't interrupt. So, we'll, we'll take the oil and we'll uh, lead it from another lantern over to the, to, to the warehouse. And then we'll break that lantern, returning the original one that's now out of fuel, and burn down the warehouse without directly burning down the warehouse. Make it look like a lantern broke. I and like it. I like it. I was going to say, I anyone, have some oil. And, and if anyone sees us, you know, we run away, and I'll drop this uh, bandana, and they'll be like, oh, it's our ruby wabbits! Causing uh, more mayhem. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, once we, we get out of, you know, eyesight, or somewhat safe, we can, you know, ditch the clothes, burn them. You know, so as if we never there. Hmm. All right, no, 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 you can pitch in. Okay, so y'all start to enter the dock ward. Uh, you notice as soon as you cross um, uh, from uh, the trades ward where the yawning portal is into the dock ward, uh, you can start to smell the, the scent of fish and the sea air. Uh, as you get deeper and deeper into the dock ward, as you pass by Spiderweb Alley and Troll Croc, Troll Croc Alley, uh, that a bunch of the street lamps have been uh, uh, destroyed by people throwing rocks at them. Uh, you notice that there are homeless people uh, sleeping on the sidewalks here. You notice that there are a bunch of dingy dive bars that people are coming in and out of. And you notice that all across this area, there are warehouses. Warehouses and warehouses and warehouses. Uh, some of the warehouses have people working in them. Uh, Blinken, you would know uh, that members of your guild are probably here working the night shift to get uh, the fresh imported wood to take back to the guild uh, for people like you to work on. Uh -huh. And you continue walking uh, southwest and you get to the corner of Dock Street and Odd Street. Uh, and you see this third warehouse from the corner is the one that the orc uh, asks you to burn down. Uh, the street lamp uh, outside of it is broken, so it's really hard to tell uh, anything about it. What would y'all like to do? Uh, <clears throat> the broken street lamp, is there any oil in the area? Uh, it appears that it was broken uh, a long time ago, so there's no oil in this street lamp. Uh, but you are in the docks ward, you know, uh, any ship, uh, would probably have oil on it. These warehouses have oil, uh, businesses around have oil. Uh, one second, let me just double check my items. I have two packs on me, right? I've got my explorer's pack and a burglar's Mm-hmm. Um... It has two flasks of oil in it. Okay. <clears throat> and a hooded lantern. Okay. So, uh, I'm thinking... We... You know... I, I got these bottles of oil, why don't we just, you know... Make cocktails out of them and throw them at the uh, warehouse. We can make a few. Yeah, I got two. I got I got some oil here. I'll uh, can I show it? I I also got a couple torches. <clears throat> here. So like, you know. Oh okay. shit! Fuckers is ready to cause an arson. All right. Uh, before y'all do this, do you want to investigate the warehouse at all? Uh, I would like to just to see what's yeah, in make, there real quick. To make sure there's no okay. people, we can just drag uh, them out. Or be before we go in, thinking. mask up. Yes. Like masks yeah. Up. Mask on. Fuck it, mask. No. Okay. Like, smart okay. thinking, blink. Smart thinking, blink. Yeah, blinking. Good job. Good masks. Hmm. All right, Blinken. Uh, these warehouses, uh, us as players, uh, they kind of look like uh, old barns. You know, they're all made out of wood. 
Uh, if it ever had paint on it, it's been discolored and peeled off by now. Um, and kind of like a barn, it's got these big doors in the front that you would slide open, and then it's got a window on top, and that window is open and the door is locked. Uh, the street lamp outside is broken, so you'd have to get close to it to find out anything about it. Uh, the sign outside says, um, uh, 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 Dragon's uh, Fishery and Hatchery Imports. Wait, Draven? Dragon. Oh, that was Draven. Gonna be scared um... for a minute. Uh, Blinken, did you bring your dragon spawn with you now that it's nighttime? Uh, you know, yeah, I would probably bring him, like, keep him close, like, you know, like in, like, somewhere in my pocket or somewhere in my bag or something. Just like, okay, it is like... the size of, of your whole forearm, so yeah. it, it's, it'd be hard to shove in a bag. But, um, uh, at first, when you let it out, it wants to, kind of like a cat, jump out of your hands and uh, sniff various things throughout the city. Um, but as you hold on to it, it learns, and it stays clinged onto you, and it can crawl kind of all over you. Uh, and you notice that it should hurt when its claws dig into you, uh, but it really doesn't, and it doesn't even seem to rip your clothes at all. You and this dragon seem to be a natural fit. It eventually finds a spot on your shoulders that it likes to perch. It weighs about... 10 pounds. So it's nothing at first, but if it did it for a while, it would start to hurt. Yeah. I'm just kind of like setting it while, you know, the uh, venture on here. And then once I get, I want to get closer here, um, I want to do like a stealth check, you know, kind of try to like go in there and not, you know, be seen by the lights or anything to see what's in there. So like, see, there's a window, maybe climb up to the window and see if I can look inside to see if there's anything in there, anybody, you know. Okay, I need you to roll an athletics check. Alright, let's... I do acrobatics. Yeah. Uh, 17. 17? Okay. You are able to climb up to that window. Does anybody else want to go with them? Yeah. I'll be joining them. All right. All right. Having watched Blink and do it, you know where to hold uh, and stuff, so you don't have to roll to get up there with them. Uh, Thor, Thorgrim, what would you like to do? I guess I'm joining them. <clears throat> All right, so all three of you climb into this warehouse, uh, and as you hop over the, the rail of the window, you recognize that you're on the upper level where kind of a supervisor would stand and look down at the warehouse below to make sure everything's being moved around in an efficient and productive way. Uh, you see that inside of the warehouse, there is only one lamp, uh, and there appear to be a bunch of boxes around. Uh, roll a perception check, all three of you. Goddamn. Can do it anyway. I don't think I'm landing over to 10. <laughs> Nine. Oh, Maybe yeah. I'm exaggerating, but like. Alright. Uh, Thorgren. Been tough. Yeah, they have been. Thorgren, as y'all get uh, inside this warehouse and the uh, air is kind of closed off, uh, you're smelling only the warehouse instead of the entire dock ward. You notice that this place that's supposed to be importing fish, it doesn't smell like fish at all. What's it smell like? Uh, a warehouse. There's just not a very strong fish smell in here. This ain't no fisher, uh, fisher hut. Don't smell like fish. Yeah, something's fishy around here. No, lack, lack thereof, oh. actually. Oh. Hmm. All right. Um, knowing that information, what do y'all want to do next? 
Uh, there are barrels downstairs and a lantern. You said barrels, boxes, and one lantern. Yes. Is that lantern lit? Yes. Do we do we hear anyone? Uh, not at first. But if you wait a minute, you can hear the. Uh, sounds of some strange footsteps. You wait a second longer, and wobbling into that torchlight comes a kinku, a bird person, specifically oh, a crow person. Uh, and it waddles back and forth, and it looks to the left, and it looks to the right, and it turns around the way it came, and walks back and forth. And it says, Patrol the warehouse! Patrol the warehouse! Right. Are there any papers um, on Brax this desk up here? Brax, with that uh, nat 20 perception check, you would notice that the kinku is wearing around its neck a purple bandana with the emblem of a yellow eye sewn into it. it, it any of you knew uh, what, what gang wears purple? Uh, with an eyeball. Anastar, I believe. Is, is he someone we want to fuck with? Uh, I would probably ask our other buddy, but he's not around. <laughs> well, he's not here, so, I mean, it's up to us. I mean, to me, I think it's pretty shady what they do, so probably not want to fuck with them. Because they're, they're like a shady group. Do you know what Sanathar is? What? You know... The front door was locked. <laughs> the only open area was this window. <laughs> Why don't we just chain the window shut and burn down the warehouse? No witnesses. We fuck over a bad gang. And we can always scot free because no one will know it's us. Mm. Uh, real quick. Blinken, since you're the only resident of this city, you would know of Xanathar. You've heard rumors of the criminal uh, uh, mobster that runs uh, the... You've heard the rumors of the beholder mobster that runs all crime in Waterdeep. You know that the sewers are his domain. You even know he own he, he, um, you even know that he personally runs a few of the shadier guilds in town, and there's rumors that he's funding all of the guilds. You hear that anybody that meets Xanathar never lives to tell the tale about it. Yeah, oh really? Yeah, he's pretty shady. I don't think we should <laughs> fuck with him. But we're being paid five gold each. You know what? Yeah, I, I understand that, but... Like, we, we need the money. Well, I do. Look, well, hey, hey. If you got a bad feeling about this, I'll respect it. We can leave. But, no one knows we're here. No one seen, seems our faces. All we have to do, lock this window when we leave. Molly the the warehouse and run. We can leave the bandana. I have it like caught by a piece of glass or something. You know. Make it look like someone else did it. Throw them off our tracks. And uh <clears throat> you know. We don't have to fuck with them again after. You know, one time thing. Mm hmm. Say you heal, what do you think? <clears throat> he was all smoking his pipe and he's just like, huh? What? What's happening? Damn it, heal. <coughs> you know what? Smoke out not... of his face. Did you just not hear a word we just said?
No. I, I was facing <laughs> up for a second. Oh, fuck me. Uh, well, this this is this bird I'm sorry. man, Inku here, affiliated with the Sanathar Guild, and you know that the well, I'll tell you the Sanathar uh, builds a pretty shady uh, outfit. They have that beholder mobster thing, and he kind of runs this most of the city. I mentioned that you'll see Huel like it's scared. What do you think we're gonna do? I mean, we have the job to burn this. Place, yeah. But like, we can do the job, leave without being seen, one time, don't have to fuck with them again. You know, and you know we we have a way to throw them off our trail. So, so as we leave, just leave the bandana. That way, it looks like the Ruby Rabbits did it. You know. Uh, yeah, we get that, off that sounds free. good. And we never have to fuck with, uh, never have to fuck with, uh, Zanny again. I like it. We should, uh, maybe even leave a couple of them because I know I have a red one. Yeah, we, you know, so. Maybe just leave okay. one or two of them so it's not obvious. Yeah, True. So, w what we'll do, right? Let's climb out the window, get on the roof. So let's let's do that now, actually. Um, on the inside of this warehouse, on the upper level you're on, there's a ladder leading up to the roof, but there's a hatch you're gonna have to open. Uh, whoever goes first is gonna have to roll a stealth check. How how did we get in to begin with? The window. You climbed in through the window. Well, then let's climb out through the window. I thought you wanted to get to the roof. Well, you said that we can... Oh, we don't know if the hatch on the roof is locked. No, it's it's just a hat. You're inside the warehouse right now. You're on the upper level of it. There's a ladder that'll take you to a latch that's in the, ro in the roof, and you can get on the roof that way. Oh, well, we don't necessarily have to get on the roof. Like I thought we were like, on the upper floor, that's why. I mean, we can just hop out the window if you guys are down. Just hop out the window, like, lock it behind us. You know? Yeah. Well, the window's on the second floor. Yeah, we... So, okay, you'd be hanging while trying to close it, so that would be a, another check right there. Well, uh... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 50... Uh, feet of hemp rope. Uh, is there a support pillar in the room with us? Uh, yeah. You notice that in the center of the warehouse and on each of the four corners of the warehouse, there is a thick timber reinforced with uh, metal plates at the bottom. I'm going to tie the rope to the closest one out of sight. Okay. Drag the rope to the window. And, uh, mm -hmm. right, boys, so let's hop out, and I'm going to pull out ten pittons, or climbing spikes, and I'm yeah. actually going to, like, motion that I'm going to hammer them into the window to nail the window shut, like, on the sides. Okay. okay. That way, like, you know, you can't just pull out the, the nails at that point because they're in the side of the windows, and I'm going to have my face covered with my mask. Okay. Uh, you know um, there'd be no way to do that stealthily, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, does anyone have any issues with this? Um. No. I don't see any. No, I mean, I, I, I don't uh, have any issues. I think Blinken would probably want to go down first, like, you know, to the ground before this shit happens, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, like, I'm going to stay up I'm gonna come out last, uh, and give you my flasks of oil with the the rag in it, so you can toss it and light it. Okay. And we can just start burning down the warehouse, and I can nail the window shut. Okay. Heal. Oh. Pause. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna make sure my face is covered. I'm gonna let the boys out. And we're going to do that. 
Burn it down. Okay. Um, since you're not trying to be stealthy, I can't think of anything to make you roll, Brax. When you're done, uh, we'll have Lincoln uh, throw uh, the bottle, and he can roll a dex check for that. So, yeah, I'm just going to jam the window with a, with a pitten. Uh-huh. And uh, climb down. When you begin you know, hammering on it, you hear some sound from the inside of the warehouse. You go, you go, uh, you hear, what's that? What's that? Guard the warehouse. Guard the warehouse. And you hear the sound of something running across a wooden floor. I'm going to bite my tongue because I'm tempted to yell at it. Mm -hmm. So I'm biting my tongue. Clang, clang, clang. And, uh, you know, I'm going to signal them with my foot. And I'm going to start sliding mm -hmm. down the rope. Okay. Blinken and Huel, that is your uh, signal to do what you're going to do. All right. I guess I'll light the oil bottle thing and just toss it. Then I'll throw the next truck here. I've been rolling high. All right. Oh yeah. There you go. Cool. Just trying to get away. Boogie away, right? Oh, okay. I thought you were throwing one too. Oh, I thought you were throwing one too. Oh, oh hell yeah. I'll... Dexterity check? Yeah, yeah. Commit some arson, dude. Come on. Oh, he lights yeah, the bottle. Check. He's gonna run away. He's like, oh, I forgot. He turns back around. Uh, you'll as you make the throw, uh, the raven on your shoulder goes arson, 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 burn it down, arson. All right, with yeah, the twelve, right. yeah, yeah. Um, Blake, and you got the highest roll. So, like, where did you want the fire to start? At the door, the window, the corner. What's up? I probably do it on the maybe on the corner towards where the window is, like on a. Uh, middle corner type situation, so it kind of spreads that way. Okay. Um, then Huel does it on the opposite side. Both of you manage to hit this building and set it on fire. As the fire and smoke begin to spread, you hear something inside go, Leave! Leave! Run! Guard the warehouse! Uh, uh, and you also begin to hear shouting uh, in the streets nearby. You hear someone go, Fire! Fire! Call the Fire Brigade Guild! What do y'all do? I'm going to start running and hiding. And I, I mean, I still have the red garbs on me, so... Yeah, yeah. So y'all have so, a plan. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to take the mask and on a non- As we're running, like, once we're out mm -hmm. of sight, right, or, like, once our back is turned to them, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the mask and drop it. Like, at, like, the entrance to an alleyway or something. And okay. we're just going to haul ass out of here. All right. I'll say that you dropped it at uh, Siren Street <clears throat> right here. Okay. And y'all begin hauling ass, all three of you wearing your red garments, right? Yeah. yeah, and I pull my shirt over my face now. Okay. So y'all would be heading back to the person that agreed to pay you, right? Uh, we we would get close, and then we would change back to our, like, we would just take off the red clothes, uh -huh. I feel. All right. Y'all make your way over to the high road in the uh, southern ward. You're about a block away from the beer golem where you met Istrid Horn earlier. Uh, the dwarf singer. Uh, Y'all change back into your normal clothes, and then you walk back towards the beer golem next to that alley where that uh, orc was, and you see him standing there uh, on the street corner. He's wearing a big old cloak, uh, and he's talking uh, to someone. Uh, that person uh, extends their hand out to him and hands him a gold coin. He hands that other person a small leather pouch, uh, and he sees you guys walk up, 
and he is holding a big, massive bow uh, behind his back with these uh, arrows that almost look like saplings, that look like small trees. And he says, I, I didn't know if you guys would follow through with me at all, but I'm already here in the fire brigade rushing to the dark ward. And my contacts told me, you guys hit the right building. Well, deal's a deal. Five gold coins to each of you, yeah? And he holds out his hand, and he's holding 15 gold coins. Right. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Deal's a deal. And he, says, uh, and he says, hey, here's another quarter of a silk root powder. Good job. If you ever want another... If you ever want to do something like this again, head back towards this alley. I hang out here a lot. We'll definitely consider it. I'll shake his hand, take the silk root powder. Uh, I'm going to lean over to Huel and Blinken. Uh, you think we should tell them about uh, Zanny's boys in there? He probably knows it's Xanathar. No, but I'm saying we can get Hazard pay. Yeah, so I'm uh, thinking maybe we should. I, I don't know. I mean, if you think you could convince him, I don't think you could convince him. Oh, I'll have to convince him. Just, you know. Right, I mean, you could try. I, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay with it? Yeah. You too? You? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. So, uh, what was his name? He, you told me it. I accidentally erased it off my uh, sheet. Like Zara, Zarvi, or something like. Something. Yeah, he started to say Zara, and then halfway through the oh word, yeah, the Shadow he Man. He stopped right. talking and said his name was the Shadow Man. All right, so I just have Zara slash Shadow Man. Right, <laughs> so Shadow Man. You know uh, who that warehouse belonged to, eh? Uh, he goes, uh, yeah, belonged to a fisherman I had a problem with. Yeah, that fisherman must have had a lot of Hold fucking up. eyes. Yeah, they say it belonged to a fisherman I had a problem with. Yeah. Be a shame if Zanny fan out. As, uh, no, um, what's his name? Yeah, Zanathar. Yeah, Zanny. You know, found out you were fucking with his fisherman's huts. Uh, you see the orc, uh, look down and think for a second, then it looks back up and says, Hey! Don't we have a good thing going on here? We do. How about we keep it that way? Yeah? We do. I just wanted to get to know uh, our business better. You know, if we're going to be fucking over people like that. Might be nice to uh, engage in official business. Well, officially, if you come, if you ever have a hankering for gold, come back here and I'll give you another target. You know, not against that idea. How about we get one gold each on goodwill that we will come back and be repeat customers? Roll a persuasion check. Persuasion. Am I going to get vertically inspired on this? Yes, I will throw it. <clears throat> I still have another couple of them left. Get the D6, uh, sorry. I'll start singing and humming like whistling. 18. 18? Alright. Uh, he thinks it over for a moment 
and you see him uh, again look down and then look to his left, and he's looking at the entrance to the beer golem. There's a few people outside smoking pipes, uh, drinking uh, pints from uh, metal mugs, and you can hear inside there's very loud music playing and someone singing very loudly. Uh, there's also a small or a short woman uh, smoking a pipe at the table right next to the door. The orc looks from there and looks back to you and says, I, you know what? You did a good job. You did it on time. Yeah, I can see the logic of that. And uh, he reaches into his pocket and you hear some jingling and he pulls out three more gold coins. By the way, boss. We'll have to worry about uh, Zanny's boys following us. Well, you left them a little clue from the rabbits. <laughs> so. Yeah, he says, again, who the fuck are the ruby rabbits? Exactly. Perfect! That's what we want! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, are y'all done here? Yeah. I say we go to the bar and get sloshed. Oh, yeah. Yes, let's head to the tavern. No, I mean uh, this tavern bar? here. Oh, yeah. The robot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the beer golem. Beer okay, golem. as y'all begin walking across the street, uh, that door to the beer golem opens, uh, and you see that go goblin you saw earlier, Schema Weird Bottle. Or, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I no, yeah, he is a goblin. I'm sorry. No. Schemo's a gnome, not a goblin. My bad, I got that wrong. He's a gnome, okay. just like you, Huel. Uh, except his skin is gray and dark, so he is a, I believe, a deep rock gnome, is what they're yeah. called. Um, he opens the door, and he says, God damn it, nothing ever changes with that man, and he shoves his way past you. Uh, with the light from the door, you could see that that woman smoking uh, in the chair was Istrid, the bar, the woman that sang for you earlier. She looks at Schemo and says, Schemo, wait just a minute. Uh, but Schemo continues walking off into the night. Uh, Istrid gives you all a nod and begins smoking on her pipe again. And as you head into the bar, you can see that that bard you met earlier, Davil Starsong, is playing a lute and uh, singing on stage. Uh, that orc you saw earlier, Zaraj, the female orc, is nowhere around. And Davil is singing a song, and he sings, I'll give you a shot to remember, and you can take all the pain away from me. And y'all enjoy uh, a lovely night at the Beer Golem, a rowdy bar with cheap drinks and good music. And I think that's a good place to call it for tonight. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, that is the the first role play and factions uh, session. Y'all got a negative one renown with the Ruby Rabbits. You got a plus one renown with the Castle Lanterns. You managed to disrupt some part of Xanathar's operation and you were not caught while doing it. And uh, you managed to make uh, inroads with this mysterious orc that hangs out outside of the beer golem. Uh, does anyone have any questions before we end the session? Uh, so we got plus one with the, uh, the Doom Raiders. We got plus one with Mr. Shadow. Man. I, never, I never said you got plus one with the Doom Raiders. You have plus one with Mr. Shadow Man. No, but we also delivered the wine for them. Oh, oh, yeah. yes, my bad, you did. And then we took a, a negative one to the rubies. Yep. As you hit their leader, uh, you tried to hit their leader in the face. And I pants them. And you pants them. <laughs> uh, fuck, y'all might have negative two. <laughs> the ruby rabbits. Nah, it's just negative one. I mean, if you okay, wasn't such a bitch. <laughs> but this is kind of how I want uh, these uh, stories to go. We'll do a heist, and then we'll do some roleplay. We'll do a heist, then we'll do some roleplay. Um, 
and y'all can build up your relationships with these groups. And as y'all figure out what you want to do with your characters and the journey you want to go on, I'll try to work them into these role play and factions uh, stories. Uh, I don't want y'all to ever feel like you're on rails or like you have to do uh, the story. I want you to be able to use all these factions and your relationships as tools to get the results you want uh, in the city of Waterdeep. Uh, did everybody have fun with this? Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all I care about then. Yeah, um, let's see. So... Yeah, it looks like everything is good on my stream. I'll go ahead and rate Fantastic. out. And I'll upload the video whenever it's ready. So That's great. I love uh, editing these things into like shorter podcasts. It's, it's yeah. like uh, really fun for me to do. It keeps me busy for a while, too. Let's rate out to this guy. They're doing a Spelljammer D&D thing, so that's cool. Oh, cool. Trade him out, and uh, we'll see you next time, folks. Bye. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it was fun. Bye-bye. Peace.